Welcome to Free Agents, our cipher system RPG set within the Beacon Space universe. While a faction turn deals with giant political organizations and factions, our game looks into the penumbra, the edges of the shadows where light and darkness meet, the cracks of society, the place where clients with exacting needs can claim plausible deniability and get the things done that nobody else can. Individuals within the penumbra are our titular free agents, and a team of such will perform a mission today. Let's introduce ourselves to the team uh, going down the list. Let's start with Sir Theodric. What have you got to tell us about yourself? Hello there. I am playing as Sir Theodric, the twice damned former member of the Starlet Court, specifically Order of the... Sundered Heart, I believe it is. Yes, yes, I had to check my notes for a second. Uh, last time we saw him, uh, it, it, it was a bit of a mess. He, and he's back to make some more money. Very cool. Uh, Whittle, almost, well, competing with Cinch now for most adorable agent. I <laughs> introduce yourself. I am playing Whittle Mariothel. She is an inquisitive speaker who crafts unique objects and a Queltle, which uh, might be a bit inconvenient in this mission, but uh, yeah, last time she traded in half a room before a discount on a spaceship. It's true. It's true, she did. Uh, next up, everyone's favourite space cowboy, Seymour. Why don't you tell us about yourself? <clears throat> Now, some people have called me Seven Bullet Valentine because they say I need seven shots to hit the broadside of a barn. Most of those people are dead. Um, yeah. My name's Seymour Valentine. I do a lot of exploring. I don't do a lot of rooting. I do some tooting. I have occasionally done some shooting. I love How many sh <laughs> shots did it take you to kill the people that call you Seven Bullet Valentine? Now, why in tarnation would you ask me a question like that, mister? Because it's like seven, eight, nine, maybe. Fourteen. Yeah. Listen, I can't count above seven, so, you know. <laughs> it, it, goes, it, listen, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, some, a lot. Very many. Did I shoot six shots or seven? No, <laughs> honestly, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the, the guy in armor gets it. You know, some, many, I got a lot of bullets. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have our sneaky mechanic. Can you tell us about yourself, Kit? Yeah, uh, Kit is a mechanical te technician who moves like a cat. They, uh, Last time they managed to steal some information with using a shiny spanner. Uh, hopefully, uh, the locals we're going to de deal with next time, or this time, are going to be just as intelligent as last ones. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. And last but not least, but maybe the shortest, Cinch, why don't you tell us about yourself? Oh, no, I think I'm a couple inches taller than Will. We'll have to figure that one out. Uh, Cinch is a clever explorer who's very good at working the system. She was born on the Spirit Station. And uh, if you could describe her in any way, she's like a chainsaw inside a lobby box. That's completely unassuming and far too dangerous when you get up close. Very cool. Okay, well, those are our agents. And where do we find them today? Well, our camera shot pans in over a star field and it, it pans around we see a floating holographic advertisement for slamming shortbread and uh, as we swing around we see a giant uh, silver and white craft moving through the darkness of space covered in bright lights multicolored lights and uh, the camera zooms in on the ship and it comes in through a portal and in through the portal we see a resplendent red velvet casino uh, dripping in gold and silver and adornments a heavy crystal chandelier and uh, there are various games and tables baccarat roulette blackjack anything you can think of 
And uh, you, my agents, have been given uh, an allowance to gamble while you're on this cruise. Uh, the uh, it, uh, the cruise ship Teleria. You've been given an allowance by your handler Hermes, who's given you a, a bankroll while you play on the ship and are in transit to the mission location. So, uh, where do we find our agents? Oh, I'm straight up at the roulette table. <laughs> mm. So the camera pans over, we see... Uh, what do we see? You tell me. Uh, Cinch is sitting sort of in between a couple of very high rollers, sort of watching them back and forth. She's got a bright pink uh, drink in front of her, and she's sort of chewing on the straw as she... Uh, Bets in a pattern on the table and uh, always puts it on 13 for sure. Always puts it on 13. Mm -hmm. Anyone stood with Tinch at the roulette table or are you doing other things? It is, is, oh, uh, Kit is there, um, like, isn't betting any money, but just watching this pattern and just seeing what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Whittle is also not spending any money, but more so uh, talking to the other patrons, uh, seeing what they're about. Anybody in particular that you're speaking to? Another customer, a pit boss, a dealer? Probably other customers. Other customers? Cool, cool, cool. cool. Uh, where do we see Theodric? Theodric is... If they have one... Uh, that robo racing, I think it was. If they have oh, one they of those... definitely have robo racing. Yep, they have. Yeah, I, uh... I, I think I think he's just watching that and seeing if he doesn't mm -hmm. hear anything about um a certain crazy man with a shotgun at the Grand Prix. Yeah, actually, um, on the the deck below the casino itself, there's uh, a large in the center of the casino, like. The casinos are the not the casinos. The game tables are arranged around this central, um, almost a clock face in design, this crystalline floor. And through it, underneath, you can see a top-down view of the Robo Racing Arena, which is on the deck below. And uh, we can see Theodric through that, standing in the crowd to cheer on this uh, on this small circuit that they have within the cruise ship. I think it's less cheering and more of just trying to, uh, it's still trying to wrap his head around it. Ah, uh, sorry, not uh, the crowd is cheering. Theodric, of course, yeah. is doing. Yeah, yeah. Everyone Stunning. is dressed in uh, tuxedos, fancy dresses. We see people from all kinds of species and backgrounds. We see some uh, some dress uniformed members of the assembled Commonwealth Navy. We see uh, the the gene rights of the children of the vein. We see. Uh, representatives from all the different societies within Beacon Space on this cruise ship. And uh, where do we see Seymour Valentine? Um, so, Kit, you said that you were just, like, standing off to the side observing things? Uh, yeah. Um, it was just well, watching the roulette table and just kind of, like, Almost kind of like meditatively, like watching the the game go by. Yeah, I think I think as Seymour saunters into the scene, his outfit is exactly the same. Sort of this like rough spun synth leather, um, like a, a chest plate of some sort. But he does have a single cheap bolo tie on over his breastplate, um, and I think he immediately cashed in all of his chips and went straight to the alcohol. Um, so he has like maybe a bottle of whiskey under an arm. He has a uh, like a, a tumbler in one hand, um, and he just immediately like zones in on Kit, and he's like, "Kit, buddy, pal, how have you been?" And he like just comes right up, and he like puts an arm around you as though um, you were longtime friends. Seymour is obviously sloshed already. Yeah, to like, cash in your chips, they don't even accept it. They give you the whiskey for free. Oh, shit! Mm -hmm. That's that was a mistake on their part. <laughs> yeah, Kit like 
it kind of like stumbles a bit off balance with you leaning on him, but yeah, he like catches both of you together and mm-hmm. uh, they, they, yeah, like they, they reminisce about like the old times and then they like pause for a second and like stares you down, like trying to see through your eyes. You still think about it? Yeah, I think he says that, and like Seymour is probably like mid swig and like brings down the glass. He wipes his mouth and he's like, think about what. And there's like a flash like over his iris of like this horrible gnashing of like teeth and blood and viscera. And Seymour's like, well, fuck it. Guess I gotta get more drunk than I thought I was. And he puts his glass down, he pours it, he slides it over to Kit, and Seymour just starts drinking from the bottle straight. Alright. Kit takes uh, <laughs> uh, a, a shot, and, but like, sips for the rest of the night. Or day, if it's midday. Mm. It's hard to tell what time it is on this cruise ship. Yeah. And, uh, well, as we look, as the the TV show that is Free Agents is uh, showing this James Bond esque scene of you all uh, dolled up out at the the cruise ship casino, uh, we, we review the the mission that you're all on, which I will show to everyone. You've already seen. Uh, the sender is Hermes. The subject is Perfect Failure. And the mission that's been given to you is the client has requested you ensure the failure of a scheduled rocket launch on the recently discovered Planet Z in Hex 1304. It is of utmost importance that they remain ignorant of life beyond their rock. Insertion via luxury cruise ship Telaria. With uh, listings of various rewards, depending on the accomplishments of the agents. Also noted is some information about Planet Z. And um, yeah, so you can all take one XP because you've accepted this assignment. And uh, does anyone currently not have a cipher? I do not. That's two of us. Let's uh, let's go in alphabetical. Theodric, why don't you roll me a one d three, please? I don't know why. Uh, that would be a three. A three. That is a fantastical cipher. Roll a 1d100 for me, please. Uh, 62. 62. So yours is ray emitter brackets fear. You get the fear gun? You get a fear gun. Ray emitter fear. Uh, Ray emitter fear. The effect is, allows the user pro- to project a ray up to long range that causes the target to flee in terror for one minute. You get a fear gun. Whether this is some bleed effect, if it is uh, technological in nature, is up to you when you use it. Yeah, and uh, Whistle, you roll 1d3 for me, please. Two. That is a manifest cipher. If you could roll 1d100 for me, please. Also 62. Nice. What are the chances of that? Uh, Manifest cipher 62 is... Metal death. I'm sorry, what? The name of the cipher is metal death, which the effect is produces a stream of foam that covers an area about three feet by three feet, transforming any metal that it touches into a substance as brittle as thin glass. The foam affects metal to a depth of six inches. Oh. So you get a one meter square one meter by one meter by six inches of metal destroyer. Metal destroying insulation foam. Uh, Thank you, Lich. Uh, 
one in 10,000 is the odds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, much. That's uh, interesting for this mission. Yeah, that might oh, be very man. useful. I can't be a detective. Yeah. I don't want to be a History Channel special. So, uh, you have all been in transit for quite some time. As part of this mission, uh, you, were give, you were all uh, given tickets to the cruise ship Teleria, and you've been given the, the, the Platinum Holiday Package. You've been given free chips for the casino, you have drink on tap, you all have luxury rooms, um, and you've been just enjoying the last two and a half weeks, roughly, um, as uh, as uh, you've been in transit to, to your destination. And uh, what have you been doing over this two weeks to prepare for the mission ahead? Listen. Oh. Well, what do we know of the people of the planet if we're trying to hide amongst them? Yeah, you, you've been doing some research on, on yeah. Planet Z. Yeah. Um, you would know, uh, just without having to roll, this is like public information. Mm -hmm. um, planet Z was uncovered by Ascent uh, several months ago uh, by an Ascent exploration fleet. Um, it is unknown if this is a rediscovery, as in a system that was known before and then was lost in the glitch or the beacon was, or if this is a fresh system that's never been discovered before. But uh, from probes, we do know that the people were uh, human at one point, although they've diverted so far that it may be, it may be close or already be classed as a separate species. Um, homo planet Zeus or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so they were human at one point. Their evolution has diverted on account of being on on a non-Earth-like world. Uh, you'd also know all the things about the planet that are listed in the planet tanks, which are... Um, I have them down here. You would know it to be TL4+, uh, tens of millions of population with a corrosive atmosphere, uh, a temperate temperature and a hybrid biosphere, which means a biosphere that's partially native, uh, partially genetically engineered or alien. Is there a way to find out like why this species has to be kept in the dark about like off world for them? You're asking me the GM, but in that case, uh, because the client has told you to, and they're paying your bill. It's not very satisfying. Yeah. And Vincent poke around and see if there's a way to find that out. Um, I will, I will read the blurb that was on the, the mission prompt as well, which is sensors and probes show a society on the brink of collapse. Industrial age technology accelerated by a crashed seed bank. They now revere as the avatar of their nature God. Extensive tampering with advanced biotech has thrown their once stable atmosphere into a highly acidic state. And the, the article continues, but those are most relevant points for, uh, for this preparation. So you're trying to find out what exactly? I want why... to know what, why, they, why the, they have to be kept in the dark about life off of their rock. How are you going to go about trying to find that out? We're on a cruise, on a cruise ship, so it's not like, you know, I've got a place to... Mm. I'm going to think about that. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard because the entire system is set up so that you you don't know who your client is, and you'd have to know the client to know their motivation, I think. There's a, a difficult question to answer. Yeah. Mm. Um, you do have access to... Um, it appears that your client is incredibly wealthy or, or willing to spend a lot of resources on this because they've given you all the holiday package. And um, they also have uh, probes already on world, um, robotic probes that can do some, some prep work for you if you give them instructions.
So if we needed like a safe place to land or a safe place to like stay while we find the, mm -hmm. the, the, the rocket launch site and figure out the best way to sabotage it, that can be a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have instructions for the probes that are on planet for information that would be useful to you, that can be something that, that as a group you come up with. Like I said, you have about two weeks worth of time in which to, to plan and to do things before you arrive at the planet. Um, um, that safe house, I presume, would have like appropriate clothing to make us die, obscure us, or make us look like locals. Uh, yeah, you you from from the probe data, it appears that um, the the corrosive atmosphere has led to a standardization of clothes that people wear outside, which uh, have strange symbology on them, which the probes cannot work out the the um the significance of but uh, you're able to to fabricate uh versions of their environment suit so, which again using the cruise ships on board additive manufacturing machines is uh, no big deal can i use my decipher skill to see if i can understand the gist of the symbols on their clothing Oh, uh, when we see you doing this, are you, um, is this, everyone is in someone's room and you're all sat around planning? Is this on your own at a computer terminal? What do you think, guys? Are we hanging out planning or is Finch just far too curious and being a loner I... while everyone else is drinking in the casino? I think since part of the purpose is to not be discovered, the importance of stealth means we should probably be planning together. <laughs> yeah, I'd say plan together. Yep. Are you an Oxyauto? Well, you see, uh, it's not uh, quite that. Um, you see, um, well, given some of the humans on our planet, uh, they have... Uh, given us some of these records of these things you call lax and often and it seems we do share uh, some uh, similar evolutionary uh, uh directions but uh, no we are we are quintal uh, which are uh, you know sapient so uh as Whittle finishes the sentence he realizes that or they excuse excuse me they realize that seymour is lightly snoring but seymour <laughs> is in the room <laughs> I think Theodric is more interested in figuring out what the symbology is than, hey, there's a weird alien. Because <laughs> he's from Seahe, and for those who do not know, Seahe is home to many strange alien species. I've just worked with Whittle now a couple of times. I'm just like, hi, what's up? Hey, yeah, Seymour would defend himself, but he is unconscious. <laughs> All right, so we're all kind of like hanging out, and I'm curious about the the symbology on the the clothing. So, yeah, you instruct the the pros to like send you back images of the the clothing. Uh, the clothing, if they have, or even if they can get like like the clothing, if they can get images of graffiti or other forms of writing on the walls. You know, every every everyone has it. Um, any for like any kind of writing. Let me just see if we can. Yeah, the um, give me uh, hmm. tell you what, we'll do it this way around. So the images you get back are grainy and distorted, um, coming through the corrosive atmosphere, and the amount of power available to the probes that are on world makes it difficult for um detailed images and information to to be sent back but uh, it is possible and you do get back some some images and some reports from the probe and uh, what we'll do is we'll have you roll to see how well you can decipher and uninterpret the the garbled images so um someone can help to give you an asset and you can use your decipher skill an intellectual or... Uh, intellectual. Um, this is difficulty. Difficulty four. It's average difficulty. Okay. Could um, I assist 
uh, with my skill in learning new things. Uh, sure, yeah, that can be the the asset from help. Okay. Anyone else? Is it, hmm? is it a limited number of people going to help at a time? Uh, so, maximum of two. Okay. Well, I mean, flavor-wise, you can all be helping, but in terms of <laughs> mechanically, you get two helps. I am flavorfully helping. Oh, I enjoy yeah. the flavor. Enjoy that flavor. Um, I'm gonna actually do an effort too. So, this seems very important. Better than next next time. Uh, 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 Success. So you're able to to pick apart the scrambled images which it appears the probe has landed on top of some kind of stone building. And uh, as you look around, it appears to be a, a town or a city of decent size. You can't see, like, you're not looking at, like, a farmstead. You're looking at, at buildings in all directions, which it's got, like, a... It's not a 360 camera, but it's, like, eight cameras set up on all the cardinal directions that it fuses together into one image that hasn't meshed together exactly well. And um, the the clothing that you see in the street is people wearing robes of only four different colors, which you don't see any clothing of any colors that is not these four. And uh, they appear to be like full robes of vulcanized rubber or some other material like that, like you'd see in um, like in Contagion or any kind of pandemic movie. The the full body rubberized suits. Uh, that are quite baggy and loose, almost robe-like. Uh, you see, um, you see red robes. You see light blue robes. You see dark blue robes, and you see green robes. Are there like specific casts I'm noticing from any color, or do the people wearing, like, would you see people walking around in robes, like everyone wearing a mixed color, or is everyone that? appears to be together wearing the same color. Yeah, you don't see any of mixed color. You see far more red and light blue than any other color. And uh, you only see maybe one or two green or dark blue. Hmm. And uh, you can get a glimpse of the um the symbols, but you it's in a language that you don't know. Well, you guys might not. But it has a cipher. And he knows. Ooh. You oh. use that cipher? Damn. Uh, yeah, so comprehension. So he knows two languages because it's a five or higher. And mm -hmm. one of the languages will be Planet Z. Sure. Uh, you can note the language as Valkian, which I will I will write down. And you know it's called Valkian because you understand the language now. Yeah. Um, you understand that the people of this world call the planet uh, Valkai, and uh, you understand that uh, the symbology on the robes um, tends to indicate name, job, and uh, a word that, even though you know the language, you don't exactly know the meaning of, because it's not really an equivalent, like, it's like an idiom, you don't, like, you can read the words themselves, but it doesn't really mean anything to you. Okay. Which um, you note that the red robes have uh, Tolilali written on them, the light blue have Nilatili written on them, uh, the dark blue have Unanvalk written on them, and the green have Ranivalk written on them. And uh, you can note that in the latter two, the Valk is the same character as in Valkai. 
right. So um, with this, uh, with Kit being able to understand the language, um, Whittle will pull them aside for some of the journey and uh, start talking with them about the language and like kind of getting them to speak it and talk to if Kit's willing to do so. Um, and as pr- providing that uh, you're willing to do that, Kit, um, mm-hmm. the uh, Whittle has the ability to babble. After hearing a language spoken for a few minutes, you can speak it and make yourself known. Understood. If you continue to use the language to interact with native speakers, your skills improve rapidly to the point where you might be mistaken for a native speaker after just a few hours of speaking the new language. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Kit understands the language as a native speaker. Uh, what was the, the second language that you chose, Kit? Uh, do I have to choose it now? I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, Sorry, bud. I don't actually know the languages of the sector. You can pick a culture and then I mean. Um, I I'm gonna go. So you know, like in Star Wars, there's like the water uh, condensers have like a specific language that C2PO needs to know. Yeah, oh, like machine code as a language. Yeah, can I have that like be like, uh, like I understand engines. Like Starship engines. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We can have. Yeah. We can absolutely have that. You can interpret uh, engines. Like you can read their error codes and their information without without having to to look it up in a book or plug in mm. an equipment. You just know them. I can hear. I can hear the the hum. Absolutely. And I know what, what what they're thinking. What is it about um, Valkyan that? Like lets you pick it up and just know what it means. Like how how does that happen? Starship engines, obviously, you've worked with them your whole yeah. life. This is just something you know. But um, I think it's just something about the phonemes. They just like mm-hmm. the cadence to them just makes sense. Like the uh, like it it sounds almost like poetry. Like how mm. it. As a, a standard beat or meter to it, and the phonemes fit nicely with that. With that, yeah, the, it's definitely it's made up of rather than like a, an alphabetic language, it's definitely uh, like a hieroglyphic language using swirling characters that mean sounds rather than uh, words made up of letters. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Whistle can pick it up and. Um, I'll say anyone else who wants to over the two weeks, you can have a crash course in Valkyrie and pick up some some basic Valkyrie. And if you don't have uh, Whittle's special ear to be able to pick it up like a native in a short time, I don't know that it's in character. <laughs> That's why I said it's up to you. I think I think Theodric will attempt to, but the entire time he's doing it. He's trying to re- translate like the the uh, the mantras of the High King, mantras the mantras of the High King in into this language, and just getting incredibly frustrated with himself. And like, it is just trying to like tell like like that that word doesn't have a literal translation. Like you'll need like a whole sentence to translate that single word. Like, like understands uh, Theodric's frustration was like, I can't help you on this. Yeah. Uh, it actually, roll. Um, give me a difficulty four intellect check. Difficulty four. Yeah. Um. Uh. No effort. Nice. Yeah, as Theodric asks you to like translate this poem about the High King, and you say it doesn't translate exactly, the sentence that you come up with that closestly approximates it, you could see with some like 
spoonerism and change over time that it had become the word Ranivalk that's associated with the green robed people. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. You get the strong sense that um, it's attached to some kind of station, um, like royalty, a position of, of leadership or authority. You know, it's a sentence that doesn't approximate exactly, but but is about it... translates to royalty in, in the common tongue. So what you're saying is me kind of making a joking RP moment may have accidentally just unlocked some of this. Yeah, no, yeah. we'll make sure that we have, like, red robes. Yeah. We, we want... probably spent a lot of time trying to figure out, like, what the best color robes are Yeah, for this, and that right there did it. I mean, I, as a, a GM, enjoy rewarding creativity, so... Speaking of creativity, um, I think Whittle, given that uh, even with the... Uh, environment suits just to kind of make sure she kind of fits a more human-esque appearance um in the last mission she picked up a bucket and so i would like to attempt to craft the bucket into a helmet to kind of disguise the fact that she has gills mm, some kind of like you've been in a horrific accident and there's a facial reconstruction kind of potentially or potentially just like a motorcycle helmet where, like, something, like, big, bulky that you would, like, potentially for protection or whatever, but, yeah, something to, like, disguise the gills mostly. Yeah, uh, I mean, you you have the ability crafter. It's your, your whole focus is that you craft unique objects. So, absolutely. Um, just give me a, a straight-up... Um, give me a 1d6, and that will be the tier of this disguise that you make. That's it. Fantastic. Yeah, you make a superb disguise. Um like yeah, uh, to cover your face. Like when you put on like full body clothes and put this on, like even your fellow teammates have to squint for a second to be like, hang on. That's not a human, you know. Oh sorry, buddy. Didn't realize uh we had a motorcycle gang on board. And just like kind of rules her eyes, but he reminds her of the English. They liked it. So we're we're trying to land. Uh, how are we getting actually onto the surface? Did the contractor say? Yes, yeah, there's a, a small shuttle being provided for your convenience, was was the phrase used. Okay. And it's stealthed in some way, I'm guessing? Uh, their technology, um, as it comes to spaceflight, um, the, the rocket launch that you're going to stop is very primitive. They, they're TL4 when it comes to biotech, but in general, they are still TL3 industrial age, their ability to scan would not detect a, a standard shuttle in beacon space. Uh, as long as you set down somewhere, it'll be a UFO story, like their society probably has a dozen of. Okay, that makes sense. One of you will have to fly it, however, so... You heard it here first, folks. Uh, canonically, Beacon Space acknowledges the existence of alien landings and uh, crop circles. So I didn't hear crop ahead. circles. He says in the <laughs> presence of a literal alien. <laughs> Whoa! Now that you mention it, your helmet did such a good job of disguising the fact you were an alien. Well, that is the point of it. Uh, technically, aren't we all aliens? Like, I grew up in a space station on a, like, asteroid, dude. <laughs> That's true. Um, but obviously Seymour is the least alien, of course, by absolutely no subjective measures whatsoever. Um, I mean, exactly. <laughs> Aren't I mean, you from an entirely different universe? Anyways. <laughs> like, um... sometimes naturally bright pink hair is, like, not... Like, oh, it's not a dye or anything. That's cool. No, like that's naturally bright pink. Get too close to like, I don't know, 
Yeah. We'll, we'll blame it on the bleed. Yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, blame the bleed. Pretty much. Uh, after a solid week of Seymour being perpetually blackout drunk and then taking a cold sober that I assume the casino ship is offering complimentarily. Uh, I mean, the cold sober comes from your seemingly unlimited supply in your duster pockets, but yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I get blackout drunk, I take a cold sober, and then I get blackout drunk again. Um, <laughs> but after a week of this, uh, as it starts to lose some of its allure, I think I go back, I guess Cinch's room is our sort of unofficial headquarters, and I'm like, uh, Cinch, I, I was meaning to ask you, um, the probes are picking up that the planet is TL4 in biotech? Yeah, that's what it said. I mean, isn't that why their atmosphere is all crap now? I mean, maybe, but I'm just saying, you know, I don't know Hermes from Adam. We could, uh, pick up some and, like, see more, like, pads yes. his pockets. Yes. I like this plan oh. so much. Okay, yeah. Um, specifically, do you know if they've got any cool horses asking for a friend? Well, I haven't seen anything with less than six legs on the probes yet. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, heck, that's two more legs than a horse. That's half as, half a time over better. Um... Yeah, and so Seymour is basically going to be, like, looking at, like, livestock, um, if there's any evidence of, like, hospitals or medical technology, if there's any sign of nanotech. Um, he's he's just thinking about how to steal something and sell it, and maybe not necessarily <laughs> listening to the mission brief 100%. Yeah, that <laughs> six-limbed horse that you see is definitely a, is definitely a cockroach hybrid. Oh, no, gross. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, all of the livestock and rodents that you see, they all have six legs. They all have a hardened carapace. And um, oh, when you're asking about graffiti, um, you don't actually see any graffiti because the stone building that you're on, like all of the stone buildings nearby, appear to be pockmarked by damage of some kind. And there are a newer, clearly newer, uh, uglier gray metal structures that are popping up. In, in places that you can make out on the images. Yeah, all these old mm. stone buildings are, are, are damaged and decayed. And there's no graffiti on their surfaces. So Kit brought up the excellent point about the safe house and disguises. Um, mm -hmm. I bought a full environmental suit. Would the safe house have the materials for disguising my environmental suit to look like whatever... Uh, the general population is wearing to go outside, or I, I, I suppose this question would also apply to me, since you know my yeah. base armor isn't basically an Enviro suit. Yeah. So, so part of the appropriate clothing was the ship is going to make environment suits for you that are in the style and technology of the planet. And um, I would, I mean, it's up to you, but if you don't want to be detected, I would recommend not wearing your environment suit. Cool, 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 cool. I take my environment suit and throw it out the airlock. No. Um, <laughs> like, like, no, like, keep, like, I think he's going to keep that. He's going to squirrel that away. That'll come in handy. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. No, no, we don't get rid of it. Just it's for like sake of convenience, <laughs> just for sake of convenience, we'll say that the five of you have some kind of penthouse suite where it's five different rooms with a communal area and it's still one room, you know? Yeah, sweet. Yeah, like um, a big Vegas suite. So all of the livestock are horrible cockroach monsters that have probably <laughs> massive breeding problems. Ooh. I mean, cute cockroach. I mean, you're assuming that, but you can speculate <laughs> like if you wish. Um, I, I'm like, I'm trying to picture the ladybugs. Like, they look like the ladybugs. From you know, that's Peter, yeah. Like, but see, yeah. that's what they are. <laughs> Like that's that's yeah. what Cinch is focused on. They are yeah. like the adorable, gigantic ladybugs. <laughs> uh, yeah. I set about trying to find a cage, and yeah. I don't answer Just... any further inquiries if the staff asks me. And you know, maybe they think with the handcuffs at my belt and me asking for a cage, I'm into some weird stuff. I don't correct them. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, or Deirdre instantly assumes that been... you're into some weird stuff. I will note <laughs> about the foreign fauna, it has all have had to exist in an atmosphere that is now basically pure acid. So... Yeah, I can also ask for some a of the bottle. <laughs> so yeah, that way we can spritz <laughs> acid on it. Yeah, definitely into some point? weird shit. So yeah. this, the staff definitely come to your room. You have a, a you have an empty spritzer bottle from, um, from the like a cleaning maid's cart, and they also give you a small pet crate. Assuming that it's for a, uh, an animal of some kind, domestic. I look at it disappointed. Look at the view screen that has like the horse-sized cockroach, and I sadly take the pet carrier. Um, I, I mean, also... it would fit perfectly a cockroach rat like vermin creature that you've seen. We'll totally Ooh. find it. We'll, we'll find an egg. We'll find it. <laughs> Ooh, also good point. Yeah. I tip them half of the weird gambling currency I have been allotted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the on ship uh, I, I tokens. Suppose, I suppose the question about the eggs then becomes: Are they fresh or not? That determines the value. Oh, that's true. Are okay, they, they alive? Do they sing, Clay? Well, if it's yeah. small enough, theoretically, you could capture a breeding pair. Hey, I'm just <laughs> like, saying. Some people like robo racing, but what about rat that... cockroach racing? <laughs> uh, that's that's all Seymour does to prepare. Yeah. And air quotation marks around prepare. <laughs> to jump back about three tangents. Um, yeah, the. The building that the probe has identified and parked itself on top of is empty and can be set up as a safe house to operate out of. Yes, that is totally what we tell yeah. the probes to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so over this two weeks, you have uh, made clothing orders. So you've all have, you said you were making the red variant. Um, I think Kit, not, not in any actual, like, Knowledge or anything picks light blue instead. Light I blue, think, all four. I think Whittle also lead, also does bright blue because she likes blue because she's a she's from a blue planet. Yeah. Sure. So so that's uh, five light blue robes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, you've done that. You all taken a language class with uh, Kit and Whittle being fluent, and the rest of you being able to say please, thank you, and where's the toilet. Yeah, I don't think Seymour even does that much. I think he asks Whittle or Kit to write cue cards for him, and he intends to just hold up the cue cards. <laughs> cool, cool, In cool, 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 cool. <laughs> yeah, very cool. And uh, what else have you done? You've got... They were totally making side plans to like investigate a hospital and try and figure something that looks like a hospital. Try and figure out the best way to you know get a few few things to line yeah. our pockets with. Yeah, there's only so much that you can see from uh, like what is essentially a traffic camera in the middle of uh, a city. Like you have your building, the buildings immediately around it. You can see the tops of buildings far off on the distance, but you don't see any particular building marked as a hospital or uh, or anything um, like that. I thought we had multiple probes. Yeah. So, one on the building and then other probes flying around looking at stuff. So, by probe, think like Martian rover. Mm. Not like a fully autonomous android that can move through crowds undetected. <laughs> You're just not as... I, I like Yeah, I'm, I'm a big probe. meanie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who else votes for drone like probes? No, <laughs> no they're like the they're like the helicopter that went along with Curiosity or whichever one it was recently. It's parked itself on a building undetected somehow, and yeah. So yeah, you you have uh, camera views from various points of the stone complex that you've designated. Your safe house, but yeah. Ingenuity. Uh, you do also have like um, satellite shots of the launch area. Um, is another thing that you have that you know where the launch area is in relation to your safe house, 
Um, and you do have satellite imagery of of the area that is blocked by cloud, crowds, uh, clouds, and there is interference, but you have a general idea of that overhead topography, like a uh, bad Google Maps. <laughs> So between yeah. landing, landing our conveniently provided shuttle, and the launch date, how much time is there supposed to be between? Well, I was, I was, that's why I was listing through the things you've done: language classes, making the, the clothing, um, yeah, doing the decryption and probe information. Like when you tell the probe to take a picture, currently it's it takes like a few hours for it to get the response and then send it back to you because you're, you're that distance away. But yeah, the, the time swiftly approaches. Is there anything else that you'd like to do within the, the two weeks that you have to prepare? Um, one last thing, sorry. So we know that Whittle has something very useful for melting the ship, um, but I'm looking at like maybe a long rifle or a sniper rifle. Like I'm just a little nervous that we might have to pick up something extra, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, to be clear, I wasn't asking to be like, all right, let's get a move on. I'm just uh, to have mm -hmm. an idea in my head of all the things that you've done. Um, no. Oh. Well then, I sit down with every patron in the casino and ask them about their individual life stories. Sure. Who would you like to start with first? <laughs> no. uh, first, I start. <laughs> Finch is going to save herself some time and just, you know, hack the yeah. bank accounts of a couple of the really. That's what she was really doing at the roulette table. Is she was finding the rich ones. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. See so what you actually find uh, an old rich Icarosian, which are the the deer like people with a, a long white beard that goes down his feet. He goes, <clears throat> you know, I never knew that there was another person called Seymour Valentine. Oh boy, uh, yeah, it's actually a surprisingly common name, and I guarantee you that whoever this other Seymour Valentine is, and whatever dashing deeds of daring do that they've done, were all done in the best interest of <laughs> the Icarosians. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, um, um, is there any more mission prep? Uh, I, I am trying to buy either a sniper rifle or like a wyvern long rifle or something. Sure, well, the wyvern long rifle is specifically a uh, Starlet cult weapon, which you can certainly have mm. picked up if that's what you're looking for. Um, um, yeah, you you can find and acquire a long range weapon for about a thousand tau. Yeah, really. I mean. I don't know. So I know now two members of the Starlet Court, uh, but I don't know that that necessarily makes sense. So I think I might go with the sniper rifle, which is damage six as a heavy weapon, right? Um. Yes, my mind just went blank. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, as a heavy weapon, if you don't have the skill for it, you will be hindered when you shoot it. That's why they call me Seymour Lucky Valentine. I've got a lot of middle names. You do. You've also got a lot of the first rules and mottos and... Arrest warrants. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> so uh, with the generic sniper rifle, you can tell me like the brand name, where it comes from. It, it doesn't oh. have to be just the, the generic version that's on the sheet. Like The Wyvern Long Rifle was just um, another player saying, this is what my rifle looks like. like. You can tell me. Oh, yes, and importantly, which ammo it uses, because ammo is uh, culturally specific. You can't always pick it up. I see. Um, does someone use... Flechette rounds. Who would be most likely? I'm I'm leaning towards um, maybe the Locksburg Locksburg Combine or Children of the Vein. Yeah, typically when I say like give me a flavor of a rifle, we'll pick one of the nine factions, and then we just assume uh, that it's within their purview. 
Okay. Um, um, I think it's a child of the vein or children of the vein children sniper of the rifle. Vein. Yeah, um, this this sniper rifle is then uh, maybe appropriately weirdly biological. Like you, there are some moving parts that you definitely think are bone or meat. Yeah, and to be clear, Seymour is very unhappy about picking it up. Um, like, I yeah. think he's looking for a really long time at this lever-action rifle, um, but it probably has a range of, like, optimistically 1,000 meters before it, like, falls off. Um, and so Seymour slowly and sadly comes back to the sniper rifle that, like, thrums slightly when he holds it, and he's like, Yeah, I guess I'll take this one. <laughs> yeah, um, I think the, the rifle that you get... Uh... Uh, is from a vein called the Luminous Rose. Okay. Yeah, so they have a, a Luminous Rose sniper rifle. And that's uh, that's a, a partic- particular vein within Children of the Vein that specializes in uh, in bioweapons, but not in the traditional meaning of bioweapons. They, uh, they grow their guns of uh, a bone structure and then grow meat and stem cells on it. Ah, uh, yes. Right. Ethically sourced sniper rifles. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Free-range sniper rifles. It was fed all of the bionutrients it could need and then cut off from uh, from the the blood of heliocytus. Uh, no with e- the wets... Oh. There's yeah. no ethical consumption under Beacon Space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will note that you don't actually have any revolver ammo in your inventory. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, you can have 50 revolver ammo. Cool, 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 uh-huh. cool, 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make that divisible by eight. No, uh, so under the weapon of revolver itself, I have oh, ammunition so you, 100. So you did, okay, yeah. Uh, the sniper rifle comes with 10 free rounds if you don't buy any more. Sweet, I do not buy any more. Yeah. Again, these rounds are weirdly fleshy, although they are in- encased in metal, as is the majority of the, the rifle itself. Okay. Yes. Then with a... <laughs> with a wet slap, uh, I, hold, I pull the sniper rifle over my shoulder, and that's all, that's all Seymour wants. I'm good to go, mm-hmm. baby. Yeah, there is a note that when you're cleaning it, that uh, it might have sensitive skin on the, the lever action. So be careful with uh, which shampoo you use. I use bleach. I mean, like, sensitive <laughs> skin, you just got to get the Johnson & Johnson stuff. <laughs> yeah. Question. Yes. How, how much would it be for me to acquire a bandolier of grenades? So a grenade is 500, and there are uh, two base varieties, either Thermite, which does 5 damage in an immediate radius, or a Sonic, which does 2 damage in an immediate radius, but uh, each target has to make a Might defense roll, or they, are, uh, they lose their next turn. <laughs> no, basically a grenade or a flashbang. But they're noted as a thermite grenade or a sonic grenade. 500 per grenade. Hey, anyone want to go in with me on getting some grenades? <laughs> Listen, worse comes to worse, right? What we can do is we can just open up the fuel tank, toss a thermite in there, close it, and run. I mean, it's not the worst plan. Yeah, I'll take a grenade. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Oh. For reference, the launch area looks like um, equivalent to a launch area at Houston today. Just walking up and throwing an, ex- an explosive in the gas tank probably won't go too well. <laughs> probably get stopped before you not, get there. But... Listen, not with that attitude. You can <laughs> certainly try. It's Plan Z. It's Planet Z. It's Plan Z. Plan Z for Planet Z. Yeah, so I will... I will buy myself a a thermite grenade. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it, the details are in the equipment list. But it's an uh, explosive weapon and inflicts five points of damage in immediate radius. Which, using the, the relative distance that 
the cipher system uses is typically going to be within a room. Is this going to be a manned rocket or an unmanned rocket? I don't think you know from satellite pictures. Something. I mean, does it matter? Well, yeah, because we could poison the pilot. And we can oh. blow up the ship while they, uh, while they take off. Oh, shit. <laughs> Cinch, I, I thought you were growing a conscience on us, but damn. No, no, I'm figuring out a better way to bring this thing down. We yeah. could always, something something else that we could also do is we could hack the terminal controlling its flight path if it's not manned and coincidentally it happens to slam into a satellite or simply careens off into the mountain. Okay. Hey. Uh, all of this is a lot more complicated than shoot stuff with a gun, so I'm going to bow back out, but I like where you're going. Mr. Big Man, I slap your armor. Mm -hmm. That's it's the Adric. <laughs> well, we're supposed to not make too much of a scene, right? So, hopefully. Well, my, my thinking goes if it looks like, oh, they just happened to suddenly, you know, oh, they didn't have, they, they moved a one where they shouldn't have, and then coincidentally. Out. Yes, exactly. It's technological foul. Mm -hmm. Very easy to do. And, Over and the next few days of transit, the, the winking star that will resolve into the solar system of planet C uh, is visible uh, out of the ports rather than just on sensors. And the, the, the captain announces that one of the, the scheduled stops will be happening in the next system. The the uh, the ship will be stopped there for roughly two weeks before it makes its return journey back to the core. It's a six week cruise in total. Yeah, it's um, you're approaching your destination. So, do we want to blow it up? Do we want to simply sabotage the computer systems? What's our plan here? Well, I think we need more than one. So, we find out if it's a manned rocket or not. We can blow it up either way. But the simplest solution would be hack to hack in the system and sabotage it that way. I think there are certainly a few possibilities depending on uh, exactly what the situation with the rocket is. Um, ideally, we probably want to gather some more information first on planet uh, to see exactly what sort of situation we're looking at. We could it could be anything from you know setting up mechanical failure. Uh, getting rid of the pilots and or the control room team, uh, potentially even uh, persuading the uh, pilots, either persuading or distracting the pilots into crashing if it is manned. Yeah, what Motorcycle Helmet said. How long have you been on the team, Motorcycle Helmet? <laughs> it's, 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 oh, you see, I, I, joined, I joined after you started drinking. Wow. That also explains all the gnomes. Seymour totters off. Sorry, what? I just. just... No, I think. Kids, as, as, as the team's, <laughs> as the team's engineer, uh, you get given the specs for the shuttle, and okay. um, the the client is assuming that you're going to be the one to pilot it. Uh, you're given the the technical specifications. Uh, you're given um, a launch site. And yeah, the the uh, the benefactor gives you like a private information packet about the flight path and and travel down. Okay. Um, well, the details look correct, uh, but do any of you uh, four know how to actually pilot a ship? Just really know how to fix them. <laughs> I mean, and like, can't can't you tell the engine what to do? I wish it were that easy, I think. <laughs> I tried it once. That was on the, the ground. Oh, oh, <laughs> where has a shuttle? Chris, Chris said, well, very well, begrudgingly. Well, yes, I have a shuttle, but I got the shuttle because you said I wasn't good at negotiating and I had to prove you wrong. So, you know, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily <laughs> mean I'm a good pilot. So you're welcome. Now you yeah. 
I have definitely piloted a shuttle before, and I have done it really well, and I will not take any follow-up questions. Excellent. He'll drive us then. <laughs> I was going to suggest you were. <laughs> you also fully believe him. <laughs> and just like, how many backup plans do we need for land? Like, are we going to land? Like, you, you piloted a shuttle, but you landed a shuttle. I said no follow-up questions. <laughs> Elish, your your role play gives me nothing but confidence for this. Uh, you know, better lucky than good. That's what I always say. I think this is the first time I've ever heard you say that. What I always say, Cass. I have said it so many times. Yeah. The first rule is shoot first, ask questions later. Wait, no, I thought this thing was the first rule. I have the many first rules. The first rule rule is never tell me the odds, Chewy, and I don't know what it means, but it's my first rule today. <laughs> you have an app. This is first rule of the day. <laughs> I think Sitch just works with Kit to see if there's like an autopilot function on this shuttle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's assisted piloting, but autopilot is more for known routes, and uh, you're kind of going in hot. <laughs> well, uh, we can help each other. <laughs> so it sounds like uh, Seymour's. Seymour's on the flight. Oakley dokley. Everything is gonna go great. Just straps in with as many as many safety precautions as possible. Yep, absolutely. You can you can hear Theodric just <laughs> chanting the mantra against chaos. <laughs> uh Seymour sits in the co pilot seats. <laughs> oh no. Right, they fly on the wrong side of the space plane where you're from. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, no. I knew, I knew that. I was testing all of y'all, because... No, that, that, was, that was that was cast talking. Just oh, beaming. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have made that more clear. <laughs> you still have a bottle of whiskey in one hand as you plop into the pilot seat. <laughs> I think I have a plastic grocery bag full of empty whiskey bottles that I have been dragging around with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, save us all. There's definitely yeah, so been I... an argument at one point as you approach that, you, that you've caught when, well, maybe you haven't because you're drunk, but you've definitely heard, look, I know it said all expenses paid, but this is ridiculous. We're running out of whiskey. <laughs> no, that's that's fine. You have any um, tequila or um, rum? What? I'm funny? really not picky. Yeah. Yeah, they have a specialist cocktail called Tequila Mockingbird. Nice. <laughs> oh, um, I have, really. yeah, I have a Tequila Mockingbird uh, <laughs> in my mouth as I pilot us down to the planet. Do you need me to roll for this, or it, it tastes like famil familial regret? <laughs> yeah. Real though, it Wait. reminds you of losing an uncle. Were you drinking catches in the rye earlier? <laughs> now, that one just makes you a fascist mm. damn <laughs> I do call that escalated quickly I do call everyone a phony <laughs> <laughs> look you're wearing thrasher but you don't even skate um, so do I need to make a roll or you're, do we just assume I make it Seymour is piloting us down uh, with with yeah. heavy assistance. Heavy assistance from Kit. You're you're in the engine, keeping it steady. Uh, I am making sure it doesn't over. Like, right. Yeah. The cool. Okay. Fine. Doesn't overheat. Manage so what we'll say oh. is, um, thanks to all the safety precautions from Kit and from uh, Cinch and everyone else doing their bit to make this as safe a journey as possible, apart from Seymour. Um, How dare you! <laughs> The route down to the planet is fairly straightforward, but what we'll do is we'll have you roll to see how unnoticed you are as you make your descent. Uh, and... I'm going to go ahead and use my cipher of the Jitendra navigational data. 
Absolutely, which was the entire reason you decided to pilot, I now realize. How, how dare you? You, how you dare son you of, of a gun. You <laughs> of son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. I will admit, uh, you, you got me there. So I used the Jitendra navigational data. I'm also going to go ahead and spend a point of luck to go ahead and expend some effort. Uh, uh, yeah. And then I have an asset from the uh, everybody in the gang helping me, right? Yes, you do. Yeah. So how difficult was the task? Uh, this brings it down to a difficulty one, it must be. Nice. Gotta be. You're eased from the cipher, you're eased from help, and you're, you're eased from something else. Luck, was it? Luck, yeah. Luck. You spent an effort. Yeah. Yeah, there bada you go. Boom, <laughs> Everyone straps in. The shuttle isn't the latest model, surprisingly. It looks to be um, just one of the lifeboats for the casino, which is not designed to leave and then come back, but has been modified to uh, have shielding against the atmosphere. And it seems someone uh, has done a decent job at trying to modify it for this purpose. Um, as you can see on the screen in front of you, it's kind of like a an arrowhead, kind of delta-looking design. And um, yeah, ev everyone straps in. There's like acceleration benches with thick, um, thick restraints. Um, it's not going to be a smooth ride. The internal stabilizers are not exactly the best. And as you come through the red atmosphere, it flares up um, as with normal heat bloom. But the red caused caused by the the already red tinge in the atmosphere makes it even more vivid and intense. It's like uh, all of the beautiful sunsets that you've seen combined, or the fires of hell, depending on if you're optimistic or pessimistic. And you finally break through the upper layers of the atmosphere, and you see laid out before you the, the squat buildings, um, you see the, the city that you're landing in, and the kind of uh, what can be loosely termed agriculture of the blasted fields outside it. And you see clear crater marks of what must be either um, asteroid impacts or marks of, of a war and uh, the familiar scarring of uh, of heavy craters in the, the agricultural. You see uh, a city that's mostly stone although, as I said, there's uh, squat grey buildings that are springing up next to them, uh, ugly in design. Uh, you see over in, in the northwestern quadrant of the city from your perspective uh, you see the, the launch site and uh, your shuttle comes in on the pre-planned route towards the field where you've been designated to land in somewhat of a stealth situation, and you manage to do so unseen. You don't get any angry farmers uh, standing there with, with a, a pitchfork ready to yell at you. Uh, you don't have any cockroach beasts that immediately assault the ship. You <laughs> are, yeah, you manage to set down on scathe next to the efforts of everybody. Yeah, I just got a. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, I guess we don't question Seymour anymore. Out loud. Yeah, I just got a fiddle with the flux paddles, uh, and you see Seymour surreptitiously unplug a USB from underneath the dashboard. Okay, so the is the the flux accelerators, not the not the paddles. <laughs> yeah, the the. Altened Accelerator, yep, mm-hmm, <clears throat> yeah. As your pilot, I agree, Kit. It just kind of gets up a little bit, like, nauseous, grew up in space. Seymour, as you look at the navigational array, it definitely thinks that you're landing on a planet that is way over in the sector east, many, many hexes from here, and it's giving you notifications about some giant war and a massive mech that's on the northern side of the planet that, as soon as you land, disappears. Yeah, I, like, hit the console a couple of times until, until like, the data is all completely gone, and I'm like, yep, professional pilot. Uh, question. Seymour Valentine. <laughs> Was it only Seymour who saw the map, or was it everyone? Um, which map? The one with where it thought we were on a different planet with a. Oh map. yeah, no. Anyone looking at the consoles could see it. 
Hey, that that could be the uh, I could leave us information about who contacted us. It it might be. It might also be Salat caught off doing something. Okay. It, mechs are sort of their thing, after all. This mech is bigger than any you have ever seen. You don't recognize it as a pattern from the Starlit Core or anywhere in, in Beacon Space. It's not a pattern I recognize, though. Is, is that data lost since Seymour smacked around the computer, or can we, like, look it up again? No, that that data is uh, ghost data. It appears to have come from the Jitendra navigational data that Seymour uh, used to pilot the ship. Engine? Okay. Probably lost then. Probably too mm. old. Seymour mm. drops the USB in his tequila mockingbird and then takes another <laughs> step out of the, the margarita glass. Um, yeah, oh, you're, yeah, you're on the surface. You're on the outskirts of the city. In uh, in the there's a few hundred meters to your designated safe house. Um, you can see the the lump on top of the flat stone roof that uh, is presumably your drone underneath what appears to be some kind of stealth field that makes it look like foliage. Wearing a plant head. Uh, well, I guess like Cinch is gonna grab the US, the grab the USB and just kind of like shake it out and pocket it. Uh, but I guess we should suit up and around. Uh, Seymour tries to stab your hand with the olive toothpick, but misses. <laughs> a flick in the face for that one. Damn. Um, <laughs> yeah, I suit up. <laughs> Yeah, I was <laughs> I was gonna see if anyone mentioned about putting on their environment suit. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not the <laughs> Yeah, so you all put on the light blue robes that <laughs> the casino manufactorium made for you. Well not the casino, the uh, cruise ship. Whistle's got Which... her helmet too. Yep, yeah, you've got your bike helmet underneath. Uh, Theodric, you can just about fit it over your armor, although it's tight and it looks like you're wearing armor underneath your robes if you have your armor on. Uh, I think I'll leave my armor on the ship. Although, it, would there be a conspicuous... From everything we saw from the probes, would there be a conspicuous way for me to ca- have my swords on hand? You haven't seen any weaponry on anyone, but you could you could put them underneath the suit. And they wouldn't be too uh, too visible. The question becomes: Would I be able to get to them if I needed to, though? Well, um, not without briefly exposing yourself to the acidic atmosphere. But I, I am not. I don't think Theodric is one prone to exposing himself. So we will just have them under the robe, mm-hmm. rubber yeah. thing. I mean, you can you can get them out in the in the safe house and come up with a plan. I'm sure. Yeah, you all suit up, make your way over to, to the stone building. Mm-hmm. I think so. Well, yeah. Back there first and then poke around a bit. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you uh, you leave the stuff on the ship that you leave, you, you take the equipment that you're taking, you all suit up. Uh, yeah, as you step out uh, via the, the shuttle airlock, you note that the, the inside of your suits um cuz they're not actually native suits are reading information in um in whatever common tongue you have selected from the from the selection that they had or for Whittle and Kip you can have it in the native t- um actually no you can't because they wouldn't have it on record sorry um <laughs> uh, yeah you have it in some kind of native tongue and it's giving you readings about the atmosphere content um i'm not a scientist so i don't know exactly what the mix is but like Chlorine, mustard gas, ammonia, all uh, very pleasant stuff. Basically something you would see in a World War One trench. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Mmm, oh. war crimes, my favorite yeah. atmosphere. 
In terms of like to get everyone on the same page with visualizing these environment suits, they kind of look like um, heavy firefighter gear, and, like but uh, more rope-like with like a thick poncho that that drips down, and the the face mask with a big glass plate. The uh, the inside of which is reading all of this AR information to you. Well, we head into the the. Is Safe this house. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. As you approach, um, it's definitely more clear to you that the damage you are seeing on stone buildings is that the atmosphere and all the stone buildings, which are clearly fairly old, decades if not centuries. Um, they're all being eaten away by the atmosphere, which uh, is presumably not the atmosphere that they were built within. And uh, yeah, the the walls are corroding away, the corners are going first, um, the wall is getting precariously thin in places. And you can see as you look around, some of these stone buildings have already collapsed, and the, their rubble is being slowly eaten by the planet's caustic atmosphere. But uh, there's thick, heavy metal doors that look like bank bank vault doors. On, on the building, and you, one of you uh, spins the wheel. It, very satisfying, actually. Clunk, 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 clunk. Swings open. You make your way inside. Close it behind you. And yeah, you, you're on planet Z. We don't bump into anybody. There's no one around. Mm-mm, no, the, the pro's been sat in this building and, and the, the building is abandoned, otherwise it wouldn't have marked it as a potential safe house. Well, I we need to find out a bit more about the launch and I really want to know when, like, you know, my ear turned to crap. Is it, is uh, well, I would presume if this is their first launch into space there's got to be some sort of major coverage of the events so maybe we could find some sort of uh, a news feed of some sort might not be the case though might be it's a military launch or a, you know top secret or potentially religious if it if it was religious i'm willing to bet you an entire keg of cold ones that it's it would be televised in some description uh seymour spits in his hand and he holds his hand out to shake on the bet for a whole case of cold ones uh do we still have the enviro suits on in the house <laughs> yeah i was gonna say it was cool. it's up to you I- I spit into my visor and then with the dribbles of no, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, it's the it's the you don't have to literally do it. It's yeah, it's just for this building. It's um, it's quite it's about the size of uh, of like an average studio apartment. It's open plan, so there is there's a bedroom, there's a kitchen, and presumably. Well, presumably a kitchen and a living room area. You can kind of work out by context clues their purpose, and uh, it's all open plan with with short walls rather than big dividing walls. And um, there is no airlocks. There's the thick metal doors. As you open it, the atmosphere does leak in, and uh, as you close the door behind you, you can hear the whir of some kind of uh, air conditioning or air treatment as it's filtered from the air, and eventually the suit tells you the levels are down low enough that you could take the suits off safely. That's probably pretty standard in the houses here. Just to be sure you understand this correctly, uh, Mr. Valentine, this is, if it is, this is a two-conditional clause statement. If it is a religious event, which we don't know, then it will be televised as in some manner. Just to make sure we're on the same page about this bet. Um, I think you're saying this, and Seymour is notably not taking off his environment suit. He's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. What you said, big guy. And he's just going upstairs. Uh, He's going to try and assume an Overwatch position with the sniper rifle. Or whatever your low king of dirt says, high king of air says, whatever your... Not king of 
I says. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, as you take you the stairs. Drinking. What? <laughs> he drops a bottle. <laughs> I'm just like, this is just questioning for partnership. <laughs> but. <laughs> As you take the stairs, rather than the second floor, you find a trap door. Okay. Um, is it a similar situation as the front door? It's a uh, thick metal? It is, yeah. Yeah, I just pop it open and go out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you find yourself on the, the low, flat stone roof. Um, it looks like if you've ever seen um, Greek villas or um, in the Middle East, like Israel... Uh, Egypt, that kind of area. Um, the roofs are all stone and flat with a small um, maybe a foot tall wall that runs around the rim. Cool. And, uh, yeah, I'm doing this mainly for defenses. I'm not doing any scanning, so the mm -hmm. investigation is up to everybody else. <laughs> you do really... also see on the roof the uh, the probe that you've been communicating with for a few weeks. Hey, right. buddy. It it's like a as a probe like... does. <laughs> so, question. Is there any sort of, like, I guess, future space Ethernet port that I could plug my data jack into to, like, see if I can't find, you know, uh, bro local broadcast, like a news station or something? Do you have a device capable of doing that? I do, in fact, have a data jack. You have a, a, a data jack? Yes. That's a special ability. With computer access, you jack in instantly and learn a bit more about something you can see. You get an asset or a task to input. Okay. Um, yeah, it, I, it's all defunct, but you can find... Um, mm, I'm not so sure you can find like the equivalent of an Ethernet. Maybe... Um, just, just some sort of like thing that I could, you know. Yeah, I think you can identify a port where an aerial would go. They would extend above the house and then bring the feed into to this port. It's not like Ethernet. It's not underground cables. It's where you would stick in a metal pole. Oh, oh like the radio, old, uh... radio signals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. There is uh, electromagnetic signal information that you can pick up. As you'd like tap your data jack to it, you get the, the familiar static fuzz. I try to tune it to see if I can't get a clearer message. Um is your pool supposed to be eight or nine? I think it's total? supposed I think it's supposed to be eight. Eight, okay. I'll just adjust that. Yeah I think the yeah. something buggered up. Yeah, no big deal. You have an edge, so it doesn't cost you anything to use your data check. But um, yeah, you you can tune in and you can get the the radio, uh, radio and televised frequencies. So, what does the ZBC tell me? <laughs> Are you looking for news? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm not going to make you you roll because this is just a question of time, like flicking through the channels that you can find. Yeah, yeah you definitely find a news broadcast. Um, it appears to be like the financial channel. It's talking about um, it's talking about some kind of acquisition mm -hmm. of uh, of one company of another, or well, something like that. You can't exactly pick it up. Now, uh, you can pick up with context clues, but you don't speak the language all that well. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll just stay on there until it, until it brings up anything about this, this shuttle mission. Yeah, as soon as um, uh, Cedric had found a uh, stable channel, I uh, kept moving over there to watch what was being said. Yeah, so uh, when you look at it, you can see that it is talking about how um, how let me get out my document how one member of the Unavalk has subsumed the territory of another Unavalk and uh, is taking on all of their Talali. 
Talali was one of the names for people. That was the red robes. Was the Talilali? Is that like the phrasing of it? Does it sound like that means like farmers or workers? Uh, I don't think the. I don't think you have. I mean, from this context, you could you could speculate that it means workers, but oh, just yeah. from the word itself, I don't think. I know that they're like a very biological society, so. Mm -hmm. Assuming farmers first, then possibly workers the second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a fair assumption from what you know. Would it maybe be an idea to? I was going to say just like do all four of them. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm going through. While they're doing that, um, Whittle will kind of turn to Cinch and say, uh, well, given that uh, time is a bit of the essence here, um, whilst they're trying to uh, look at the more mechanical side from here, um, it might be uh, worthwhile to see if we can uh, find some locals and, uh, if not straight up talk to them about what's happening, at least uh, listen in on their conversations. And potentially find a somewhere more um, online than this place. I one hundred percent agree. I think we should suit up and, and go check it out. Even if we can find a bookstore or some kind of equivalent, probably have old magazines or or. Yeah, kind of an expedition. Yeah. 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 Uh, who is who is staying? So it's Kits and Theodric on radio station TV duty, and yeah. Seymour is on the roof with a sniper rifle. Yeah, do we have comms between all of our environmental suits? I imagine we do, right? You absolutely do. Yeah. Um, if I see them like open the front door and start to leave, I'm like. It calms them back, and I'm like, yeah, um, how are you going to hide the fact that we're aliens from off-planet from any of the locals? Well, uh, from one thing, uh, try to stay more in the outside areas where we're all hidden in our suits. Um, and then secondly, uh, I can speak the language fluently and can therefore uh, try to blend in if we do get asked questions. And for once, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Follow. <laughs> um, I think, like, I, I might, yeah, I think you see Seymour, like, nod his head, and he's like, okay, um, and he very conspicuously moves the sniper rifle, and it's, like, in your general direction, and you're pretty sure he's not pointing the sniper rifle at you. That'd be crazy! <laughs> what does it look like when you look through the scope? Um... I imagine it is a very, like, sort of mucous membrane yellow. Oh, um, oh great. Mm -hmm. And all of the, like, life signs and, um, like, life signs are sort of like that, that pulsing red. Uh, anything that is fairly cold through the scope, I imagine, is sort of a, um, like, a bone white. Um, because I hate the children of the vein. Sorry, did I say that in a recording? I find the children of the uh, vein uniquely situated by virtue of their position. <laughs> <laughs> it's like looking through a, a crocodile's third eye. You know, the, the thin membrane that, that slides across. Exactly. It's organic and gross. Awesome. I mean, organic and unique. For any of our children of the vein listeners out there, <laughs> cool. Yeah, uh, you can definitely see um, back the way if you point the sniper rifle back towards like the direction of your ship. You can see that eventually uh, the squat buildings give way to scrubland and um, fields, some of which contain the six legged sub some form of six legged creature. As you swing back in the way that uh, Whittle and Flutter, uh, Whit Whittle and Cinch are going, 
um, yeah, you can see the thermal signature of massed bodies. Yeah, and I keep it, I do actually keep the crosshairs not on Whittle or uh, Cinch, but rather like sort of generally around them. Like if I see them going in a direction, I sort of like try and scan the area that they're walking ahead of time because I can't speak the language, so I would be useless. Yeah, you're on Overwatch. Yeah. But I, I, I feel all warm and fuzzy and protected. <laughs> From SEMA? Yes. Um, Someone okay. was not paying attention when I piloted the ship. <laughs> no. <laughs> Whittle is, uh, whilst looking around a little bit uh, at all of the various new sites is trying her best to not get distracted and keep moving forward. <laughs> every, every year and like since she has to grab her and like so Yeah. I just keep her focused. Yeah. Anyway, we'll have you setting off into the city. Um back inside, um Kit and Theodric, you definitely get uh, a TV f- flip and Theodric you don't understand this. Uh Theodric you think that it looks like um, a chart from school when you were learning orbital mechanics. It looks like um, squiggles that could be numbers in some kind of cascading um, formulation that trickles down into a single character from a from a long string of many. Um, to Kit, you understand this to be talking about... Um, the project that is going to soothe Valkyrie's anger. Um, talking about the, um, yeah, how the, it's saying things like how the atmosphere is going to be green and plentiful, um, how the land will be blessed. Um, yeah. I uh, does, do the orbital mechanics make sense? Like, is there anything flawed in it, or is it look look like they've done the math? But to Theodric, it looks like orbital mechanics. To you, it's okay. not. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I was just saying okay. that to him, okay. it looks like weird math hieroglyphics. To you, it's the language. Okay. Um, uh, Kit, can you uh, can you translate? I think those are supposed to be numbers. Uh, it's. I think uh, you might be uh, owed a couple of cold ones. I'd love to see where I'd love to see where he gets them from not see. Well, the uh looks like this rocket's gonna bring back life to Valkyrie. It's gonna maybe it mentions something about all of the elements being brought back into alignment. Yeah, it's gonna fix the atmosphere. Yeah. Bring it all back in line. Yeah. Uh, it, the four elements it's talking about are in the medieval sense fire, air, water, and earth. And you get the strong association of those elements with also the the names of um, the colors of robes that you've seen so far. They're very similar, they have similar roots. And as you understand the language perfectly, you can see how those words are collected, connected to where um, the Talilali are associated with the fire. The Naliti are associated with uh, with air. Um, Unavalka are associated with water, and Rani Valka are associated with earth. So they're the Tau. I'm glad you said it because I was gonna say it. <laughs> hey, hey, we're airbenders. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. All but one of us have to die, and then we're the last airbender. Scotty out on the dying part. Hold it first. Yeah, she's right. <laughs> so it is, or is? Does it sound like when they're bringing things into line, is it bringing it into equilibrium or into the correct balance? Um. The it the correct balance into back into unity. Okay. I was saying whether or not into like... how things should be arranged is the the meaning okay. of the text. Which is 
subjective. Yeah. Well, it yeah. doesn't mention like a rocket or a launch specifically. I know that's like the association that you're going to be thinking of. It's talking about a future event that will bring these things back in line. And I mean, it's an obvious assumption given the context that you would associate that with the launch, but it doesn't say explicitly. It seems to be some kind of prophetic or, or religious sermon. Yeah. Kit muses a bit like whether or not it's to to make more kings or if it's to make sure that the people are seen as being in their place, perhaps. He's going a very social route with the um, description. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, we cut back to uh, Whittle and Sench. Um, you, as you've been walking further in the direction of what you seem to be the center of the city, the streets have picked up with people. You're starting to see yourself surrounded by uh, by other robed individuals, which you can't make out their faces through the visors. Um, but yeah, mostly mostly red and light blue robes. Um, Covered with the same kind of symbology that yours are, kind of uh, gold and silver swirling patterns uh, in the language of, of Valkai. Do we see any, like, not anything that looks like a library or anything that looks like a shopping district that would have, like, books or uh, information or? some kind of equivalent to an internet cafe. Yeah, um, as Whittle knows the language, I'll ask Whittle uh, for a, a difficulty three intellect roll. Okay. Maybe this would be speed. I'm not sure, but intellect makes sense. Nope. Fail. Yeah, you, you see like street names uh, presumably on signs, but you're not able to interpret specifically what any given building is. But you do see some that people are going into more often than others that seem to be like for the general public rather than domiciles. I think also like Whiffle's better at understanding and speaking the language than reading it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've picked it up from speaking to, to Kit. Kit is fluent in text and yeah, so um do we overhear any conversations while people are outside like do they talk to each other um you you don't you see like the the chatter of someone speaking on a walkie-talkie it's people using the suit to suit right well, maybe we go into one of the more popular-looking buildings. We'll look I out think there. so. Um, I calms you guys again, or Seymour calms you guys again, and, and says, "Yeah, it might be polite to take off environmental suits if you go inside. I'm just, just a reminder." Hmm. I think um, first things first is we should look at a building and just kind of look inside to see if there's like an area where people are taking their suits off or if they are still remaining in them as they go inside. Are you just going to pick a building and go in? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, the, the um, yeah, all of the buildings as you get closer to the center of town, the stone buildings make way to. They've all been replaced with these full ceramic, plastic, plastic and metal, ugly squat things that look like industrial factories on the outside. They're uh, yeah, not at all aesthetically pleasing, but they do seem to be very effective against the corrosive atmosphere. And uh, as you go into one which um, just has an open door, in fact, that it has that many people going in and out of, which is 
why the reason you presumably choose it. As you go in, uh, you see further inside um, people uh, walk it. It's um, so it's a corridor, and down the center, people are moving in, and on the edges of the corridor, on your left and right, people are moving out, like a school hallway kind of system, where uh, people going in stand in the middle, people coming out stand on the outside, and um, as you're walking in, you see. Uh, someone in a dark blue robe the people are actively moving out of the way of as they move through the crowd and um yeah they reach your position they're gonna they're walking in your direction they'll be amongst you shortly i think uh, this is the time where we move out of the way yeah yeah no we 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 follow suit we we look at we very much follow suit of everybody around but part of me wonders if we're not in some kind of like religious building that people going in taking some kind of blessing from this person coming out i kind of want to follow yeah. the crowd and further yeah you part with the crowd the the people in the center move apart like a zipper the people uh on the outside of the corridor can't move because they're squished as the people uh, move apart for this dark blue individual who walks out into the street and then uh, off off in a direction. And as you continue further into the building, um, you see what appears to be like, um, you know when kitchens have those doors that are not doors but instead beads? It's like that but vines. It's like a, a thick wall of vines that appears to have some kind of... Um, natural effect against the atmosphere. As you get closer, you can hear it hizzling and sizz sizzling. But uh, people are walking through it and walking out of it. And it doesn't appear that the atmosphere is passing by the wall of vines. It's on the other side of the wall. <laughs> Sorry? Do they keep their suits on on the other side of the wall? I don't think you can see that far past it. But people are definitely in their suits as they enter, and definitely in their suits as they leave. Mm, kind of back with when you want to take a chance. I think uh, she will like something and say, I think we uh, head inside to take a look, and if they're taking things off, we very quickly turn around. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm down with that plan. Yeah, you step through? <laughs> Yep. yep. I think that's where we take our break. This week on Kangaroo Court, did slippery celebrity defendant BBTV anchor L. Calvert conspire to poison the prosecution? Watch now on Kangaroo Court, where good justice is never blind. Fair and balanced only on BBTV5. Brought to you by the new Eaton Gene Bank. Be a better you. Cut back in from the mid-roll advertisements. Uh, the scene faded as um, Cinch and Whittle step through this uh, this vine threshold. Uh, we we get the tail end of the advertisement. Uh, if not, coleum lasts for more than six hours. Contact your doctor. And uh, yeah, the shot we get. Um, we start off with with Cinch and 
and Whittle's reactions. We see their faces. And um, as the camera swings around to see the inside of the room, the space is, it's got a squat roof, but the sense of scale is enormous. The It's like a wide corridor with several avenues um, made up by market stalls. And you see the the market stall drapes are in color, or in all the variety of uh, of the visible light spectrum, uh, rainbow colors, these uh, overhanging fabrics, um, market stalls made out of uh, a mix of, of metal and wood. Um, we see the big hall space has been um, divided by these market stalls into three corridors that people are moving up and down. You see um, bins full of what look like loose spices of different colors, uh, bright reds, vivid greens, um, yellows, blues, purples. You see strange fruits and vegetables you don't recognize. You see um, you see over an open fire, you see six-legged creatures roasting, people queuing up to, to purchase them with uh, physical coins. Um, yeah, you see this big market space. It's loud, and uh, it seems the the vine screen isn't just biological; it's also technological. As you step through, the atmosphere is filtered, and so was some of the noise from the inside. As you walk through, and it's a cacophony, and um, yeah, you see again mostly people in the red robes and the light blue robes, um, and occasionally you can pick out people in the dark blue robes. But uh, as you saw on the outside, people part around them. And uh, market stall holders um, are giving them gifts as they walk by. They're, they're picking up fresh samples off of plates. They're grabbing a, a, some kind of fruit from from a pile of them and walking off with it with no no complaints from from the stall owner. Yeah, you see this vast market space, and you do see that around you. Um, you know, like when you enter a pool and there's that shallow puddle of a pool that's to wash your feet before you go in. It's like um, what is aesthetically looks like communal showers where people are hanging up their environment suits uh, before they go in. But you do see that some people it's rare, some people are remaining in their environment suits. Though Those people seem to be those on the way out um, from further in. I think we hit the jackpot if we're going to find something. Yeah, um, what do the people look like? Yeah, so I did mean to mention this. <laughs> All the people have bright green skin. They look human. They have the normal variety of eye colors. They have bright white teeth, um, hairs of, of the regular shades, but also bright green. And... Um, they also seem to have dark black or brown markings on their skin, although it appears that they seem to be more aesthetic, like some kind of tattoo, rather than uh, anything biological. Going by the they're varied and in different places, it's either a tattoo or it's a birthmark of some kind. Um, yeah, they have intricate swirling patterns on their foreheads and forearms, um, on their cheeks and on along their jawbone, different from person to person. Um, yeah, and they all have various shades of green skin. Cool. I say we keep our robes on and our ears open and go in. Yes. Yeah, uh, Whittle, to you, you can pick out some individual voices. You can hear, um, people plying their words for a specific for a specific amount of currency you know two for a pound uh you hear people say oh, the best produce from uh unaval rakers district you know people advertising their stalls i think uh well, we're going to need to keep our suits on. Um, mm -hmm. Well, Whittle does have some parts of 
green skin. Uh, she's also got a bunch of yellow and white, so I don't think it would quite work. <laughs> also, also the uh, ha- having like fish skin rather than human skin. <laughs> um, so I think we're going to keep our seats on as we uh, walk further in. Um, I suppose trying to keep an eye out for um, somewhere which is more um, kind of, I suppose, informational, that's the bad word, but like um, where people are talking to each other about um, rather than just trying to sell things. You're trying to eavesdrop? Yes. Basically, yeah. All right. Um, give me. Um, I, think this is, I think this is a speed roll. Uh, you're moving. You're trying to move inconspicuously through the crowds, even though you're keeping your environment suits on. As long as people assume you're on the way out, you speculate that they won't think it weird that you're wearing your outside coat indoors. Um, yeah. Uh, give me a, a speed roll of difficulty three. I think uh, an average person could do this pretty easily. I am also going to spend effort. Sure. Ooh. 19. Special minor effect. What would you like your minor effect to be? Um, it's some twist of fate that makes things advantageous for you. How about um, we're moving fast enough that um, we can kind of get a bit further th- further in than you might expect. Um, just because we're moving so quickly, people are like, "Oh, we're just in a hurry." Yeah, you abs- you you look like you know where you're going. You have yeah. yeah. People don't question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you pick up on a conversation between uh, two people in the light blue robes. Um, if you concentrate and you squint, you can about make out from the symbology. Um, and from the context clues of the conversation, but one of them uh, is called Hemamdar, and uh, the other one is called Hesaya. Hesaya. Yeah, and uh, you've picked up that um, the last names of everybody, or the first names, it's hard to tell, are the, are the symbology that's connected with the robe colors. So this is um Hemamda and Hisaya Niliti is uh, is their name. And yeah, they're having a conversation about uh, a recent tournament in which um some notable Unan Valk bested another without uh, in an unexpected turn of events. You're hearing about a, a sports upset is the context of the conversation. It's not going home. Can can Whittle charm them at all? She charms everyone. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Like, like, I can just barely, like, I know I can just barely speak the language. Like, retaining knowledge is actually a detriment for me, so I might be able to sort of understand, but yeah, um, I suppose uh, she'll kind of like radio to Cinch. Um, uh, perhaps uh, try looking for something uh, electronic while we're here, and I'll uh, see if I can get a word in. And then uh, she'll turn to uh, Commander and Hestia and say, uh, Oh, Commander and Hisaya. Sorry, yeah, Hisaya. Um, oh, um, Excuse me there, I couldn't help but uh, overhearing your conversation. Um, that sounds quite intriguing. You seem to be like people who are very in the know. Imamda turns to you and says, I would think that accurate. Uh, you are... Her whittle. <laughs> whittle. Her whittle. Her whittle. Her whittle. Niliti. Her whittle. Yes. <laughs> from which province are you from? Um. Oh, come now. 
who needs all of that, that right now? You were talking about something far more interesting right then, weren't you? Uh, you yes, you you are right. Where where are my manners? Yes, we were just speaking about Unan Velka Ubika's victory in in the tournament last week. Uh, probably you must have heard of it by now. Even uh, whichever province you are from, that you're being so cagey about. <laughs> Well, of course, but, uh, well, I can help over here, and you seem to be, uh, whilst we've got, you know, the general information, you seem to be far more informed. I, I, I must admit I made quite a killing. I can tell when an underdog is going to be the victor. Ah, uh, wise indeed, I see. Yeah, Cinch is doing exactly what Whittle suggested. She's going up and down the aisles a little bit, um, trying to see if there's like any electronics, or she's sort of poking about with her her wrist computer very, very quietly to see if she can pick up any kind of signals. Um, yeah, sure. I, I think. Um, yeah, you can pick up on like the market. Wi-Fi, not it's not Wi-Fi, but you're able to pick up on the radio or other electromagnetic signal um, that's for use by market goers. I can't really read anything, so I'm just downloading as much as I can while I while yeah. I look for other sources of information. Yeah, you basically get like what would be on a typical. Uh, shopping center information kiosk you get a map of the place you get um general areas you you are able to determine um from symbols more than words that there is an area that appears to be probably food and another that is either it's either fabrics or technology it's hard to tell if it's like a circuit diagram or the clothes that you've seen with the intricate symbology. Um, yeah, you, you're able to see another district that looks like some kind of fresh produce or pet store. You're not able to, to really tell the difference. It just looks like the sick, a symbol for a six-legged creature. <laughs> I'm really glad there's an or there. After I started to get the map, I'd probably, you know, head back to Whittle and just to show her what I did find. Because, mm. you know, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want to yeah. check, we... check out the, like, the, the technology or fabric store. We, we cut <laughs> back into the conversation. Sorry, I cut you off. Mm -hmm. mm -mm, I was done. I'm good. All right. uh, yeah, we cut back into the conversation and Hisaya has speaked up. And uh, you're able to tell that Hisaya is uh, is of the feminine aspect, and um, she's she's saying to you, "Yes, I was very pleased to see Obuka Unanvalk do the victory at the tournament. It, uh, although I must admit my money was on her competitor, I'm always happy to see when the women get a chance to win." Oh yes, it's always a sight to behold. Um... Given that uh, you are in the know uh, about these sorts of things, are there any uh, upcoming events of a uh, similar quality that you know of? Um, the um, glance glances at you, um, squinting a little bit. It looks your environment suit up and down, starting to wonder why you're in it. Uh, um, why, yes, of course. Are you Are you joking with me? Perhaps. You, 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 want, you, you want me to say it? I mean, I... Okay, yes, the... The realignment is this week. End of the week. Yes, I too am making a funny. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes. <laughs> We've only been waiting for it for what twelve years. Maybe you were still, maybe you were still a pop when it was uh, first being worked on. But sure, you've you you you, uh, you must be joking with me. You have it in your account the same as everybody else. Whittle, Whittle makes like an an exasperated like hand 
wave and it's like well of course that the realignment but i was talking about you know uh actual things of similar uh levels why was that? the realignment's such a much bigger t- deal than just uh this of course <laughs> uh, so I, I, at that point i come up and just sort of make like a i don't know what's going on and little can tell some kind of lie about how dense cinch is <laughs> Uh, seeing uh, since return, and uh, of course, we'll, we'll uh, look down at her suit and uh, and uh, say, um, Ah, of course, uh, I am in a rush, but I'm sorry to uh, disturb you, but uh, it was such an interest, it was very interesting talking to you. It's no disturption, this has been a quiet day for, for you know, normally I would not be able to move for the people in here, but everyone is at home, you know. Waiting for the realignment. But of course, uh, have a good I day. still have to make a living. I am an honest nility. Of course, I would not would not doubt your honesty. Good. Listen, and I'm uh, just saying, if we kill him and take all of his things, no one will miss him. <laughs> What is I mean, that? I feel sniper rifle scope on me. <laughs> from, a, from a great distance and through several walls, I feel I feel the tingle I'm being shot at. <laughs> it's kind of like step between I just give to give Whittle and Nudge like, what's the realignment? We uh say? yeah. Um, <laughs> um Whittle will kind of take the opportunity to uh, make an exit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're free to leave. Nobody stops you. Um, again, there's a few dark blue robed individuals that um, part the crowd, and I assume you follow step in in parting as uh, mm-hmm. as everyone else does. It, yeah, you're able to move through the market with impunity, largely due to that 19 on the speed roll. <laughs> Uh, I totally feel what it'll look like just ask, is that electronics or is that clothing? Just show Which her, is like, it? The <laughs> it's fabric. Uh, it's a uh, fabric. <laughs> Although, uh, <laughs> if we could perchance uh, snag something uh, to put on, uh, we might be able to uh, blend in without the suits. Okay then. (laughs) What people? Sorry, I didn't really describe the clothing apart from saying it had the symbology on it. Um, the clothing that people are wearing under their suits is um, very similar to the robes that they wear on top of them. They are color coded as to the color of their robes and have the similar like golden or silver swirls on them. Do they have hoods? The clothes? No. Yeah. No. Is there any kind of head coverings we're noticing that could like cover the fact that, you know, I don't have green skin? Um, I mean, there are people wearing like hats and scarves and it might be a little unusual, but wearing a hood I mean, everyone goes around with their head covered outside. I, I mean, it's up to you, your judgment, if you think it would be unusual or not. But right. All right, let's go check out the clothing or the fabric. Maybe Whittle can make us stuff. I think if it's cool for a quick interjection, um, because they've gone inside a building, I think I calms them and I'm like. Yeah, what's what's y'all status in there? Yeah, we've been in the people in the market for a while. Uh, yeah, everyone else can chime in, obviously. Uh, Motorcycle well, uh, helmet. My name is Whittle. Um, yes. <laughs> Wait, uh, you're Whittle? You've been yes. Whittle this whole time? Yes. It was just such a compelling disguise. Thank you. Um. Well, we've. It seems that uh, 
whatever the event with the rocket is, is called the realignment. And uh, they've been preparing for it for 12 years. Um, and it's uh, quite the event. Um, apparently, a lot of people are at home when they would normally be out and about for whatever reason it is related to this. Um, we've also seen that uh, the uh, the blue cloaked folks, the um, the Nan Volk, um, they uh, people part ways as they walk by, um, and it, they have uh, inside a well. Well, I suppose I should have mentioned that they have green skin, but that's not important. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yes, they have green skin, um, but more importantly, uh, their clothes uh, that they wear inside uh, match the colours and the kind of patterns that um, they have on their outside suits. <laughs> okay, now, Widow, I want you to know I have nothing but the utmost respect for your intelligence gathering for your disguise making, and for your whole vibe. I really like your vibe, all right? I want that to be clear at the outset. But also, we are supposed to stop a rocket ship from launching today, so, I mean, you know. Oh, when is it launching? Do we have more time than, like, I thought it was kind of urgent. Like well, people are preparing for it, but... Four days know, from now. For much. Oh, thank you. Now, I retract what I just said about time being a pressing matter, Whittle. I am very inebriated. Um, <laughs> that was... <laughs> right. Part of the reason we split up like this in the first place was to try and uh, make a speedy use of our time. <laughs> nope, that's, that's a good call. Do you need me to shoot anyone through any windows? Not at the moment, no. I'm gonna go inside and see what the eggheads are doing. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I, I cut the line. My face bright red hidden underneath my environmental suit. <laughs> yeah. Um, to the pair that have been watching TV and on the radio all this time, um, <laughs> You can ask me some questions about like the culture or things that you've picked up, and I will I will answer what you will have seen on TV or radio. Um, has there been any mention of a rocket, a rocket, or of space flight at all? There's been. Um, so as you've been watching, you can definitely connect the religious broadcast to. Um, something going into what translates as the heavens. It doesn't. It's not heaven as we understand it in a Christian sense or an Abrahamic sense, but the heavens meaning high in the sky, and it keeps referencing it as the realignment, and um, it is emphasizing heavily and continually that it's going to make Valkai happy, and. Um, you are able to pick up on Valkai is both the name of the planet and of the god that they believe is the ultimate entity. Um, as mentioned in the mission briefing, as a nature god. Like uh, the equivalent of Mother Earth. They view the, the planet itself as being a sentient, all-powerful being. Connected. Um... Well, they keep saying realignment, and I just want to just make sure I'm eliminating possibilities. Like, there's no, like, celestial phenomena, phenomena that are going to happen at the same time? Like, um, Not that you're aware of, no. Moons or anything? Okay. You are um, also able to pick up, like, if you're looking specifically for information about, like, Valkai, and you're looking out for, like, things from the heavens, mm -hmm. um, as in the mission briefing, you're able to pick up on this, uh, this, um, what they call the, again, it's all in their language, isn't, isn't translated exactly as we would say in English, but as the avatar of Valkai. Um, it's a, a metal sarcophagus. The inside contains a wealth of information on how to grow plants, how to change an atmosphere, how to, 
um, genetically modify flora and fauna, and the the information from this casket makes up their equivalent of a holy book. Um, and the numbers that you've been seeing in the religious broadcast reference passages and and scripture from from the book of Valkai. Oh. Does it seem like this is like there's only one copy of this? Or is there like other copies of this book? Oh, like, if you search for a copy, you can find copies in a million different translations. And um yeah, uh, in fact it splits the the translation when you look for copies, it asks you which edition you're looking for, and it gives you like three main branches, which um as you're learning and you've been watching the, the radio for like and looking for information, you're able to get an idea of um also from your satellite imagery, uh three main continents. And yeah, you're able to get three copies three distinct copies of the Book of Archai, one from each continent. Is it for and... some religious reading, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Well, wow. jokes on you. I'm from a theocracy. <laughs> yes, yeah, Adric, have any questions about uh, what you've been looking for while you've been doing internet surfing? Yeah, I I guess it's I, I guess my main question would be, you know, is, is there anything that I can find? on the rocket itself that isn't going to put me on a government watch list. I think the closest thing you can find is a festival where people launch the equivalent of fireworks and it's being equated to that. The realignment is being called like the ultimate festival of rockets or whatever the translation is. I'm not clever enough to come up with it on the fly. <laughs> the festival of feel goodium. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, some kind of festival, and this is going to be the ultimate, the final, the realignment. Final. Would, um, you, would Would you say that it is the final countdown? Yeah, uh, you're able to pick up that people like <laughs> attach their dreams and their wishes and the their New Year's. Uh, promises to these rockets when they launch them. Patrick, I think we might have the Holy Grail. Well, not literally the Holy Grail, but the this text. I think they're sending a version of it in the rocket in the rocket to send to the rest of Beacon Space. I think they're going to have a very hard time convincing everyone. We have quite a few, uh... Seems, at least from what I understand, a very localized, uh, religious sect. Um, it, it, they, they frame it as a religion, yes. But this is a secret to, to terraforming. At least biological terraforming. So, uh, what you're saying is we should uh, acquire a copy of the information and what? Sell oh. it to the Terra, the Terras TTGI. I can never remember their name. I don't even remember if that's the acronym, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. Uh, maybe if, if we can get a better price from someone else, then yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, but the, the contractor said stop the rocket. Doesn't uh, say stop the type of information the rocket's carrying. The Telas Terra Group Initiative is the TTGA. Okay, I I thought it was, but I couldn't remember. Yeah. Okay. Are Ascension, um, are Ascension Whittle being updated about this stuff as it's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Unless said otherwise, I assume that all the players are sharing knowledge with each other. Yeah, if if that's the case, like if I've come down already, I'm like, 
Yeah, uh, now, I don't mean to, you know, yuck your yum, Theodric, but I am saying their biosphere, their biosphere is pretty fucked up. Oh, I'm not disagreeing <laughs> with you in the slightest. In fact, on that, I think we agree entirely. Uh, I think the primary issue is simply, one, can they fix their biosphere? I personally don't believe so. But two, if we can acquire a copy of the data, then that is very valuable. We could make a lot of money off of it. And Now, I don't know about you personally, but a lot of money goes a long way, and I am all for that. So... Uh sounds like we need to get near a computer and to the launch site to see if we can't because I'm not finding any computers here. I suppose my next search would be like best place to see the rocket go up for the realignment. <laughs> <laughs> Buzzfeed, top 10 secret spots to watch the realignment. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Zed feed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think you're able to find anything like that but I think you're able to find some kind of news article that talks about um, the largest gathering of Rani Volk from the three continents in history and it's definitely referencing the launch site I will absolutely click on that link I will yep. let the ads <laughs> play I won't even turn on my, yeah. my ad block <laughs> um, you have uh, satellite imagery of the launch facility, and you're able to correlate with some of the imagery from from the article. And uh, we will swap over. Do you all see the new map? Yes. Yeah. There you go. This is the launch site. Yeah, you're able to read the article. It's talking about how. Um, after how after um, uh, Kit translating for you presumably it's talking about how after decades and centuries of conflict um, the Rani Valk are, are coming together with the Unan Valk and uh, they're coming together in harmony for the realignment that's going to fix uh, it's going to fix Valkai it's going to bring new messages from Valkai it's gonna, um, yeah, stop the planet from weeping and those kind of sentiments. Now, Whittle, I know I have egg on my face, raw egg, from the last time I questioned your decisions. <laughs> but I'm wondering if instead of being dressed in these light blue rubes, but blah, 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 still drunk. Instead of being dressed in these light blue robes, if maybe we should dress in the dark blue of the Unanvalk, because those are the ones who are uh, getting more respect around the marketplace, yeah? It's uh, certainly one option, but uh, we kind of need to consider um, they're also very conspicuous. Uh, if we want to do something without being noticed, uh, that is probably not what we want so we need to kind of i think we need to identify a uh, one uh where precisely the lo the rocket is located and uh what kind of uh what the area around that is like both um geographically and security wise and then determine uh how we're going to approach dealing with the rocket and if we want to either uh, go in uh as trying to be disguised or to uh um, disguised as um, as a higher ranked official to get the easier access or a lower ranked official which will make access harder but potentially stealth better um, actually, actually I have something of an idea I assume we're all in just like one group calm mm -hmm. yeah go uh, for it what if we were to uh, Acquire one of these uh, Rani Valk. I think that's the one, the blue ones. And uh, the Unan Valk. The Unan Valk. Excuse me. I'm I'm still learning this language. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> if we if we uh, acquire one of the Unak Valk, we could uh, 
have them uh, bring us along, sort of as, uh, you know, servants to have on hand for a long day or something, perhaps. And then, oh, yeah. then we simply get everyone out, and then we do the thing. Why even? Why even bother going that far to be legitimate? Clearly, these people take their clothing very seriously. We just dress up as a noon on Valk, pretend we're a dissident group. We don't even have to disguise. We just. Ram a Hummer right into the rocket, and it's a splinter group causing more disunion. I and mean, you, why? And what would you <laughs> even propose we call this group? Because we don't even need to call them nothing. You were listening but, to the broadcast. It's a realignment of all these people. The Unan Valk and the Rani Valk had a disagreement already. We could just pretend to be one of them, but whole planet's probably going to devolve into civil war again or something. What I mean, in the first place? I mean, I wouldn't mind if being remembered by starting a war on an alien planet and... Worse ways to go. Sorry, what was that, uh, <laughs> Sunch? Is there... Is there any proof that what they have on this rocket will actually fix the atmosphere? A lot of faith. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you... You know what's on the rocket yet. Yeah, you guessed. You made an assumption, but they, I don't think you they, know for sure. They, they think it will work. I'm skeptical, to say the very least. Um, well, we're by a clothing store. We're by a clothing store. We could get some of this, the, the Unan Bulk clothing. Or Unan Bulk. Actually, be out, out of character here. thought for a second. Hmm. How conspicuous do you think it would be to have the shuttle go up, print out some suit, print out some of these uh, Unanvalk suits, come back down, and then you know we go to the site and you know either go in legit and oh whoops looks like your math was wrong or you know just shoot up the place. You know, I, I'm open to either, but... About um, 20 to 30 minute transit back to the ferry in your shuttle, and I'll say it'll probably... Uh, it took about 14 hours to make the suits that you've all got. I mean, we've got a week. We, we've got it till the end of the week, right? Yep, you got four days. Okay. That yeah, wasn't so me we... shitting on the idea, that was just me letting you know that... Yeah, yeah, I know. That's um, that, that's That's sort of the information I was aiming for. Yep. So, well, yeah, no, we... that's... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, like, what do we do if we have to take our robes off inside the building? So I was saying if we get some of the Oon and Bolt clothing and find some form of vegetable or fruit or something to make, like, a green dye out of it, color the skins for some of us. Looking up, so um, to... looking up crafting difficulty and time, it has... A basic article of clothing as difficulty three and takes one day general time to build. Hmm. I'm really new at this. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so saying the, that like the ship will do it for you, so you don't have to make the roll. But um, okay. yeah, it, it does take that that fourteen hours if you do it in the the ship. If you bought some fabric, then yeah, that I'd go by those rules. Yeah. So, I, I'm just trying to think. We've got four like, days. We buy, like, we'd have to steal it. How are we going to buy some? <laughs> we don't know what the currency is. Every time we we go back up, like, the shuttle's not going to fly up by itself. We'll have to have someone fly it up and fly it back down, each mm -hmm. time risking our location and our presence. Yeah, just the location, and definitely not anyone's lives, because I am an ace pilot. And Can we just kidnap a couple of them? We could just kidnap a couple of them and steal their clothes. Yeah, like, can we do that? Or, like, break into a building or something? Well, we are going to destroy a rocket, so... There, there are... I mean, gotta there are, there are um, two kind of main risks 
when when I what I think that I think about when I think about kidnapping someone, which is one, if it's someone important, uh, that's potentially going to raise alarm before um, the ceremony itself, and two, uh, if we uh, we might have to just kill them if we do that because otherwise they'll, they'll, they'll you know, talk if, about the aliens. <laughs> well, well, I yeah. mean, like, well, no, because then what, what, what will happen is that will spark a civil war. Uh, not a civil war, but a war between the continents again. And uh, during the chaos, we just casually stroll out and leave. <laughs> or we can and, follow one of them back to their home, <laughs> break in and steal some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would also work. I think so, like that, so, that might work. So this is a good idea, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like, like, killing people's fine, but hiding a body's hard. Just I saying. mean, uh, they say in in the old days, what you could do is you could uh, could give it to a uh, a swine of some sort. Oh, they got bugs here. Oh yeah, I've heard this one. Curl it before swan. Never get caught in a crime. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. <laughs> I'm. I don't think you and I listen to the same uh, stories. Right. No, that's, a, that's rule number one. That totally Catch me up. Me. What's What's the plan here? I think. <laughs> I, I think the plan is to sneak into these human vox home. Yo you know, yoink some trousers. And Unenvar. then uh You're going to the home of an Unenvalk and stealing my clothes. Yes. And and buying... <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm gonna... just a gunslinger. I, mean, I <laughs> agree with all of their decisions and have no opinions of my own. <laughs> I'm just like, alright, well now I need stealth and lock picking and <laughs> Well, I can do stealth. Maybe. <laughs> I, I I am in fact fairly stealthy. How Excellent. do you find somewhere that Anun and Valk lives? I'll probably I'll... follow them home. I'd I'd just be like, let's follow one home from the market. So you you try to so we're gonna like we we can skip to like montaging this out over a few days like we did on the <laughs> ship. You can tell me the things you're doing in preparation of your sabotage the rocket plan. That works. So, so, yeah. All right. We'll skip to to this montage of of people doing what you're doing. So this one thing that you're doing in this four days is trailing an Unenvalk back from the market. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be easiest because I have the sniper rifle to just sort of identify which house is there is by following, like watching okay. them, right? Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um. So I won't make you roll for that. Um. You will see that. Uh, the Unenvalk that you follow goes into a compound that has outside of it um, light blue robed guards. Right. And uh, is a rather large home. And then is like, it has a second story, which is rare for the buildings that you see. Um, the tallest building, the buildings that you see are about four or five stories. Uh, this, uh, this Unenvalk's home is about three stories tall. Um, yeah, it appears to have what would once have been a space for a lush garden and is now a cracked earth and some moss and lichen and an empty space where presumably a pond or some other kind of water feature would be and is now uh, a congealed black and brown tarry mess. Now, did I understand correctly that... Um... When they went into the marketplace, when they got the gifts and all the food and everything, um, did it did it look like that was like a regular tribute that they do? Like on day two, do they do it again, or is it like a once in a while occurrence? Like, um, it looks like so so far as you can tell, it's um, I think the closest equivalent I can give you. Uh, in terms of like modern culture, is when a politician visits a factory and they reach in on the line and grab something and give it to them. 
Like they're they're just being given free samples. They're kissing people's babies. They they are important. Um, okay. I think like looking at the radio and the news, um, you're able to pick up that the Unanvalk, um, have some kind of um, managerial kind of role in society. Um, it's hard to pin down exactly what they seem to be. Um, like bean counters, like administ administrative people, but at the same time, you see um, them in military positions. You see them in um, yeah, all walks of like managerial. And as you're tracking like a specific Unanvalk, the one that you follow, I think you're able to pick up that they are responsible for the market that you're viewing. That um. I think as like Whittle and other people go out on forays through the week, presumably, you're able to pick up on conversations of them speaking to market stalls and saying like, this market stall is out of regulation, you need to move it three feet back, you can't stack fruit that high. They appear to be like middle manager busybodies, and so when they were moving through the market and being given things, it was, they were taking their own produce, basically. Do I get the vibe that, like, if we wanted... Because, like, we're in such a wild place here in that, like, stealing their clothes feels less efficient than just printing out a set, right? Like... It's two different kinds of risk. If we, yeah. If we print out the yeah. clothes, we're out of um, immediate egress. Like, we're, and we and we have fewer numbers of people at one time. So, like, there'll be someone on the ship, away from us, who can't fly us out immediately. If it's a problem. Hmm. Whereas Personally, the... yeah. <laughs> Uh, personally, because the Unanvalk are so heavily guarded in such high facets of society, um, I feel like the best call would be to just fly up and print out a new outfit. But if we want to... Sorry, I, I'm doing table talk. <clears throat> but if we if we want to get uh, this Unanvalk, it seems like all we got to do is go in there and toss over a stall or apply for a spot in the marketplace and, uh, I don't know, he'll come out and talk to us. Alternatively, what we could do is nix the clothing altogether, make it look like a, for lack of a better term, lower class revolt, and simply go in guns blazing. Guns blazing is uh, not... Uh, very conducive in um, keeping the stealth of the operation. Well, here's the thing, though. That's only if they find out that we're not from here. You have nothing to lose but the swine who are eating all of your corpses. The first rule! <laughs> so I, and, and, I, 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 Seymour, I don't think you're... Uh, I don't think you're quite getting the the metaphor here no i i'm i'm on to you big man i i dig it i understand i have, have a one, name. one mind uh sorry you were saying cal <laughs> uh, uh kit i assume you're seeing all the you're reviewing the information along with everybody else yeah um kit's like looking back at the contract and like uh 2500 how for unsuspected sabotage Guns blazing, it's not going to get us all the money. Yeah, I was just going to note that you're able to pick up from studying the robes of the Unanvalk that Seymour has been trailing. Uh, their name is Udipti Unanvalk, which uh, translates roughly to... Udipti translates roughly to one who is on fire. Um, which, uh, from cultural context... It's like, um, it's like the meanings that we look up. It's not a meaning that's like actively evident to somebody. 
it's like John meaning warrior or whatever. It's not like people think, oh, that's a weird name. You're on fire. No, it's just the meaning, the root comes from fire for Udibti. And uh, you're able to pick up on the, the house that you're within is within a district that is managed by... Um, your house is within the district of Ushi Unanvalk and then Sapna Ranivalk. Do their names mean anything? Um, nothing that is immediately obvious. Um... Uh... Well, we could still mix the clothes, check out the launch site, see what level of workers are actually doing the security and the, the grunt work and the program work for this. Because are, are they going to be in bulk doing all of that, or is it going to be Natili? Natili? Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh huh. That, that 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 level. <laughs> like, are we overthinking this? Because we haven't even checked out the launch site yet. Because if if they're middle management, I don't think they're going to be the ones sitting at the computers. Like, I think we're getting like the red the, the red clothes are our grunt workers and our farmers and uh, and our color are more securities. Maybe they're that sort of slightly upper level, like white collar worker. Should we check that out before you know, designing mm. guns blazing? We we do need to check out the launch site. Yeah, you will do good guns blazing. Low and lay of the land would help. Okay, let's uh, go check out the space. A group expedition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of you go in your um, in your military robes. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. You're able to to make your way through the streets, and uh, you make your way to the launch site, which uh, this squat gray building, and you're able to see in the distance this launch pad. Um, it's not on the map, but uh, let's just say that's interference from the satellite um fences around it um this road that leads out to it where presumably this rocket has come out of uh, a hangar attached to the squat gray building and uh, there's a queue of people outside in red and and light blue robes and there's a, a dark blue robed figure at the head of the queue who is letting in groups of one two five Four as you watch for a while, three go in, and then um, from an from an exit uh, similar to the market where people were going down the center and then coming out either side. Um, there are streams of people either side of the entrance stream uh, leaving. Can right. we just bluff our? Oh, mm-hmm. I was going to say, buddy system. Everyone grab their buddy who can speak the language and go in. <laughs> I'm trying not to get separated. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Play system. Yeah, all right. Uh, you make your way, you stand in the queue for a while. Um, I think you're in between two groups uh, of, of red robed people and one of them definitely appears to be a like a, a nucleus family unit and uh you can't quite pick up on that what what they're saying because it's all suit to suit and they're not broadcasting but um there's definitely um something that you haven't seen much of which you see uh two people in smaller red robes that are slightly too big for them dragging along on the ground that you can uh, assume to be children that are along with uh, a red-robed couple. Hmm. Well, the all important question, are they taller than Sinch and Witter? 
No, the children are not. <laughs> Do these labor laws, or are we going in on a tour? I, uh. <laughs> I mean, either way, kind of works. Let's just uh, rush in behind the next most important looking guy, pretend we're a part of his retinue. Keep our heads down, keep our feet moving. It's like when you uh, go to Space Costco and they're looking for your space membership card and you don't have one, so you just stay really close to the guy in front of you. Yeah, do that. Yeah, maybe Whittle should talk to the kids. I think, you know? um, yeah, you shuffle along, you find your way to the head of the queue, and uh, the figure in the dark blue robes is broadcasting the, the internal uh, frequency out, and your suit picks it up. You know. <clears throat> Welcome to the center of the realignment. Give me your names, please. Um, Kit uh, tells a, like, gives the name of a long extinct creature of like a uh, small furry animal that was went extinct several years ago. Uh, and from, gets... from the from this planet. From this planet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kit, you are providing five names. Yeah. Five names, and they're all like, like, like closely related. Like it'll be like fox, bear, uh, rabbit. Yeah, sure. Bear kind of Naliti, fox Naliti. But translated within the local language. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you've been able to pick up on an, enough of the naming conventions to come up with reasonable names. But let's see how well you do with that. Um, difficulty three intellect roll for me, please. Intellect. Can I help mm -hmm. him with lies and trickery? <laughs> Do you speak the language well enough to be able to help in this conversation? No. No, I do not. I use no, attack it... flourish. I shoot a pot so good he gets an asset. It's <laughs> 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 uh, so difficulty oh. three. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, what I do is pretend to be mute. <laughs> effort, intelligence. Um, yeah, I know. I'll make sure that everyone who can't speak is is mute and just doesn't reveal that they don't have terrible accents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Success! Yo! <laughs> Yeah, so um, he nods you in, and um, yeah, you walk past him, uh, continuing on into the facility. Yeah, does anyone do anything before we head inside? Um, I can't think of anything. No, I think we just go um, in. Although we do want to give Whittle Morrow. Yaddle speaking permissions again. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. The, kind of important for the face to be able to speak in this situation. Huh? You know, the one who's fluent in the language. Yeah. <laughs> My life, yeah. I picked the perfect time to die for some reason. <laughs> yeah, so Whittle doesn't speak for 30 seconds and they get suspicious and attack you. No. Shit. Um, yeah. Get to just rise on that No. Mm -hmm. It suggests that, like, if anyone asks why we still have a uh, suits on, just say you've got a bad cold or a wrench. You have preempted what comes next, which is a, a big dressing room where everyone's hanging up their suits. <laughs> <laughs> just like. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Really, really hard. It's like. Um... Planet's equivalent of COVID. Go. I uh, pat someone on the back as they're coughing. I think you're able to to uh, 
with knowledge that your character would have that you don't. I think you'd be able to equivocate to some kind of atmospheric poisoning. The 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 air filters in your accommodation broke down and you're all suffering, so you have to be in the suits. Yeah. Yeah, like even a trace amount would be bad for your lungs, you've been told to mm. I think you're able to, yeah, bluff your way. Yeah, you're led into um a waiting area and uh, to everyone else you hear the familiar droning incantation of a worker isn't paid enough. Uh, for Kit and Whittle, you're able to pick up on that this is uh, the rules for touring the facility of the realignment. And I think, keep your hands for yourself, don't reach past the rails, stay in designated areas. Um, bathrooms are conveniently placed all along the tour route. Yeah. And uh, your your tour begins. Oh, sure. As they're describing it, so like I'm translating on the fly, and like a bit slowly, like accidentally says the wrong thing for all every single instruction, just because they're going too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make sure you stand outside of the rails. Uh, please use the emergency exits whenever you feel like it. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Uh... Whittle is more than happy to uh, help with the translation. Yeah. Uh, the word tour, um, you're noticing, is an idiom that translates to walking the path through the elements as brought down by our beloved Valkai. It's some long phrase, but you're equivocating it to tour. And uh, yeah, you, you, you walk, you're given a, a walk around the facility. Um, you the initial section appears to be uh, kit would be most at home here. It appears to be uh, designs for an engine, which uh, crude rocketry. It's hydrogen and, and oxygen mixing to combust into like how rockets today work, and uh, combustible fuel being used to launch a payload. And um, you're able to see sketchy video of the first tests. Uh, attempting to launch and then crashing down into water, exploding, there's a montage. There's pictures of, of various green-skinned individuals that uh, you seem to be and are explained to you to be prominent scientists and engineers. And uh, at the end of this section, there is, it's not wax, uh, some kind of plastic, some kind of plastic statue of a green-skinned individual wearing what appears to be a flight suit. And uh, as you get to it, the tour guide explains that this is that this is Janam Tolilali, who will be going in the realignment capsule. Ah, hmm. oh, sweet! That was easy. I take out my revolver and shoot the model. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um. Jumps on his arms like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, um, the next section of the tour is um, like a glass, uh, a, a corridor with a glass wall, and through it you can see what is um, familiar to us as looking like Houston Mission Control at NASA. It's banks of computers, and a, a, in the distance, the back wall with a big screen, which is currently showing various angles of the rocket out on the launch pad, um, various scientists who are mostly in dark blue robes. Um, dark blue, light blue, and um, a few red robes thrown in, running around in this mission control area. And then um, the end of the tour is, of course, a gift shop. Hey, when, we, when we were shown the uh, pilot? Or... Yeah, you can interact with any part of this. I'm just telling you the path so you can... Tell me what you do at various points. I I asked the tour guy like, what will they be doing up there, or in in the firework? Right, I mean, it, you can yeah yeah um, talks about um, how the initial tests with unmanned rockets were too unstable because they would veer off to one side or another, and uh, the computers were not strong enough to guide it, so they need a, a guiding hand on the rudder of the realignment capsule. 
and talk about how they're sacrificing their life for for Valkai. Oh. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. They're sacrificing their life for Valkai. So, so this is a one-way ticket. Well, if he dies before and it doesn't, you know, work. Yeah. Or if we if they think he ran away because he's a coward. Yeah, how how close are we gonna be able to get to this guy really though? Uh does he have colored robes on in his pilot outfit? Uh, the pilot outfit is black. Good. I am glad that we have learned much about their society. <laughs> well that that was the same was uh Red robe. It was Talali. Yep, the name was was a red robe. Ah, uh, okay. Janam Talali. Mm. So he shouldn't even be guarded, really. He could, he's probably staying in whatever passes for the barracks at this facility. Like red robes are the lowest. Wait, no. Do I have this backwards? No, red no. robes are the lowest. Yeah, red robes are the lowest cast members. There's no way they're treating him especially nice. You know they're the most numerous. I don't know if you know for sure they're the lowest, but from what you've asked me, but they're clearly the stinkiest and least valued of their society. <laughs> most <Yeah>. slight like. <laughs> I think uh, preemptively, if uh, at any point on the on the tour. Uh, someone wants to do something a bit more uh, sneaky or uh, questionable. I can, uh, uh, Whittle will uh, engage the uh, tour guide uh, using enthrall and start asking all kinds of questions about. Oh, that's very interesting. Can you tell me more about uh, Janem and like you know? Oh, tell me more about this very interesting history of all of these scientists and all of the work that they've done. It's so fascinating. Yeah. You really must tell and me. Can, yeah. Can I get into mission control with with Kit and while well, Whittle's distracting him and and hack the system to see if I can for stealth and try to slip through a door? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Difficulty four speed roll. Difficulty four. Mm. And um, Whittle, while you're enthralling the tour guide. You're able to pick up that um, sacrificing their life for Valkai was talking about how Janam has been trained um, for the last 12 years to fly this capsule. And it might not be specifically referring to the future death of Janam, but also it's not not referring to the future death of Janam. They don't know if this capsule is going to come down with Janam alive. Um, as you in the first section, you saw about how uh, the section that Janam will be sitting in does have the equivalent of a parachute and some some equipment, but they've got no idea if Janam will come back alive. Oh shit! Can I just snipe <laughs> the rocket while it's flying up? Because we know they don't have sonar, or rather, we suspect they don't have de detection technology capable of finding the shuttle. We could just sabotage it mid-flight. Do, do you have all my pacing rounds? Or is it... Oh, boy! Huh? <laughs> is, the, is the rocket weak enough to puncture, or...? Well, really, we just need to fuck up a rudder so it crashes. We don't, we don't need to, like, blow the whole thing up. We already know that it's difficult to fly. I'm applying an effort to my roll, by the way, and... Yep. Wait, no. There we go. Okay. Is there anything else? Because what am I trying to do? Can I use stealth to make the difficulty less difficult? This is something that you're doing with stealth, so absolutely. Oh. Excellent. I totally got that right. <laughs> Does enthralling the tall guide count as an asset? Um, hmm. I don't think so, because the tour guide isn't going to notice, but there's still a lot of people around that could notice yeah. uh, And... Uh oh. 
Yeah. Um, uh, you can spend I'm... one experience to reroll. That's true. If you want to. I kind of want to. The other option that I will give you I is know. if you don't reroll, I will turn this into a GM intervention. What should, what, what, how, how are you going to make it worse or better? Can you tell me that before I decide? No. <laughs> if you re-roll and succeed, then you get what you want. Um, if you choose not to re-roll, then I will offer you a GM intervention. Oh, I'm going to re-roll. Sure, spend yeah. your XP. Take yeah. your stinky GM intervention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of his GM make, sh- um, make sure you spend the... Uh... I did last time. Yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I believe you. I don't think you do sometimes. <laughs> Someone tell me. I'm not looking. Someone tell me. You got yes. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think what happens is as you step out of the tour group, um... You hear from behind you, <clears throat> Mommy, why is that person leaving the tour group? And the the red-robed um, mother clamps their hand over the, the child's mouth and goes, Shh, we do not question the Naliti, and lets you, you mm-hmm. slip away. Oh, thank God and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you managed to make your way past the glass wall. Um, I think uh, the the other members of your team <laughs> might look on with a bit of surprise as they suddenly see their friend on the other side of the wall that they're looking through into this mission control. But yeah, you're through, and uh, no one has noticed you particularly. They're all busy with their own tasks. Fine, I'm gonna see if I can find like an an inconspicuous empty computer and. Uh use my own digital interface tool and download everything I can get into. I don't think you can find an empty computer, but you can definitely do that stand over the shoulder of someone and, and slip your tool into a an access point while you're like, hmm, yes, very interesting. What's that? Oh, yeah, good good work. Okay, so I can, like, just sort of... I know enough of it, I could say, like, good work, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. you can slip your tool in. I think you accidentally say good pork, but they just don't question it. I was <laughs> <laughs> right? like, huh, must be from the eastern continent. Yep. Mm-hmm. I just sort of collecting everything, watching what my team is doing through the glass so I can, like... Yeah, I mean, um, you're, ab- you're able to get, like, launch telemetry onto your device. You're able to download whatever is on this console. And is there any inf- is there information about what's actually in the rocket or on the rocket? You can't read it. Well, it's fine. We'll take it back to, you know, get... <laughs> 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 I mean, you do have Decipher if you wanted to try and use that ability as well. Uh, well, I'm just downloading it, right? Like, he can, he can, I can give yeah. you a Yeah, you can download it and take it to someone else, or you can try and yeah. decipher it. Yeah, I was just, like, yeah. giving you the option. That works. No, I'm just going to download yeah. it in very, very... I know it's easy to, like, forget a skill that you have, so I was just, yeah. Yes. That works. Thank you. Uh, so, yes. I'm doing that, and once I've gotten them out, I need to try and sneak back into the tour group. Yeah, I mean, your your stealth roll holds. You're able to do all of this. Okay. With, yeah. Okay. Can I message Cinch before uh, she gets back in a way that like nobody else hears me, or is it pretty obvious when we communicate in our environmental suits? Private comms, they'll hear that like walkie talkie chatter, but it's, I mean, it's the same social faux pas as whispering to someone that you're stood next to. Okay. Like, people all think it's rude, but also, I mean, you're an Niliti, they're, they're they Talali. Like, 
Yeah, and I mean, I was going to shoot all of these guys anyways, and it was my only my party that saved their lives, so, you know. Yeah, um, I mean, if you did it in front of an Unenvalk, cool, but yeah, your tour yeah. guide is uh, is Talali, the red-robed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and message Sench, uh, Sench sorry, um, <laughs> to see if she can get any additional data about, like, the layout of the facility. Okay. So after after this first computer, I'll just kind of wander about like I belong there. And uh, when I see things on screens that look like maps, I just do the same thing. I, uh, I'll, you know, oh, yeah, no, nope. I'm looking just kind of like point like I'm someone important looking at a screen. <laughs> <laughs> You oh, are someone the... important, just not to <laughs> these people. Not to these people. I should have gotten the dark blue robes. Um, you know, this, this tour guide is probably proper chuff that an elite is talking to them so much. Yes, very much so. I mean, they're enthralled, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> we will strike again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, uh, okay. they invite you to dinner next week. No, they, nice. they do not. That would not be appropriate, but they want to. They want to. Just, know, just know that in your heart. They they want to. They want to keep What's up the streak. You could, you could invite yourself over to dinner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It works that way around. Although your expected... non-existent Naliti parents would be very disappointed. I never expected to be a reverse one bard, but I'm very glad I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else while I'm in mission control, guys? Uh, specs on the rocket is probably all we need. Yeah. Yeah. So I grabbed it. as much as I thought would be useful. And uh, sneak back through the same door and uh, pat the child on the head who tried to rat me out while I go by. Oh, when you pat them on the head, they are. She was in the. She she was in the. She she was in the. the, The mother's just like, I am so sorry. I I am. But they haven't learned yet. Please, I'm sorry. It's like just, just very benevolently wave, wave the mother off and calm her down with like yeah. hand gestures. Yeah, <laughs> I think Seymour moves to the stun baton on his belt, and it's purely a posturing thing. But I think he's going for the bad cop play to the good cop play that Cinch <laughs> is doing. I just uh, give me, uh, give me a might roll difficulty three. Oh boy, man! It's <laughs> isn't it so good to be lucky, gang? You know. <laughs> um, let's see. What else can I do? Can I argue that the stun sh- baton itself is an asset? I sh- I'm gonna I'm gonna lower this because it's a child, and in that society, <laughs> they should be respectful of you. This is difficulty two. Cool. <laughs> Wait, why are we stun batoning a child? <laughs> Listen, you were at my stream yesterday. It's I mean, I was, good... at, I was at your stream yesterday, and I remember what happened to uh, to Marin. Listen, it's fine. Marin's fine. <laughs> Oof, you wouldn't have beat difficulty two. Oh. oh. I think I spent my luck points because... Yeah. Uh, God, I am pathetic at intimidating people, apparently. Yeah, so what happens here is... Um, the, they wriggle free of their mother's grasp and they look up at you and you don't know what they say, but whistling Kit, you hear Whoa Neliti weapon. Oh. Uh oh. Uh, I just we just I just kinda like step in between the kids and the And the, the kid makes and like him. grabby hands towards your belt. <laughs> just like step in between the kid and and, and... Seymour and just like point to the mom. Like I haven't even said anything because I can't say this much, but I just make an exaggerated effort pointing to the mom, pointing to the kids, and and 
cocking my head at the mom. Yeah. Like, every, every mom knows that. Like, what are you doing? What are you going to do about this? Yeah. See, Ma, you definitely get the impression that this kid wants to know if you have games on your phone and has very <laughs> snotty hands. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, we just move on, right? There's no way. There's nothing. There's nothing good that comes <laughs> of this situation in me in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, Stitch is just like shoving him back away from the cho- children. There's definitely oh. a moment where Seymour, before uh, Cinch shoves him away, he like flips the baton backwards in his hand so that way, like, the kid could grab it by the handle and he looks that <laughs> fully. And then Cinch like shoves him and like maybe he accidentally shocks himself a little bit with it. Um, and then he holsters it. <laughs> Well, now that we're all back together, I right, just give Kit my uh, my computer and say, I have no idea what any of this is. So here you go. Okay. I should turn port in, in the uh, virus suit and just start like yep. um, the risk computer. Kit, um, as a mechanic, um, and you know, fluent in engines, and I think this is just I think this is difficulty zero for you. Yeah, and I, I think you just have it's full technical specifications for the rocket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's specifically telemetry over the last ten hours or so, but included is you can extrapolate from it every system of the rocket. Like thickness of the like onboard gyroscope, fuel mix, coolant valves, you know, etc. Are there any like linkages um, to the rudder system that seem vulnerable? Uh, um, you're able to note that these like you see these rings that the tube is attached to. Mm-hmm. Those are on like a separate separate stand that it detaches from. That are currently feeding it fuel and coolant, and that falls away as it launches. Okay. Um, linkages to the rudder system? No, I don't think so. Um, that are vulnerable. I mean, they're vulnerable in the way that all wires are vulnerable. In that, if they're cut, they wouldn't work anymore. Okay. But yeah, it's driven. The the rudders are driven from the cockpit, which is at the the top, and um, the rudders are are fins on the side. Probably going to do a pre-flight check where they move the rudders. I have to time delay, time delay, break them, some sort. Mm. Perhaps if they were brittle, perhaps. Ooh. Perhaps. Rhymes with whittle. <laughs> it does. That's really why I got that cipher. <laughs> yeah. 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 Either we like destroy the rudders midway through flight. Through some editing um, system. Or we do the uh, brittle thing and make them snap. Well, if the yeah, rocket I better. mean. If the rocket crashed, they wouldn't be able to tell if the metal was brittle beforehand. Yeah. Are you having this conversation back home, and you come back from yeah. your tour? Back home, yeah, makes sense. All right, yeah, you're all you're all debriefing around uh, a hastily. Con- I assume Whittle has constructed a, a makeshift table and chairs. Yeah, I like to th- I like to think the entire time I've just been tuned into the radio, television, you know, ZBC, and just sure, absolutely. Is he like shipping forecasts or something? Yeah, I'm just trying to. Yeah. In this particular case, I- I'm keeping an eye out for anything that might imply some sort of, like, strife that we could use to our advantage, like... Yeah, I think you end up on the equivalent of the History Channel, which, actual history, not a man <laughs> with funny hair talking so about a, aliens. A, a History yeah. Channel, not the History Channel. Yeah. History channel. You're fun. able to pick up on uh, the current leaders of the three continents. Um, Tomasi ran in Valk, Satvari ran in Valk, 
and uh, and Sapni Ranin Valk, and you can associate Sapni Ranin Valk is uh, on the leader of the northern continent, which is where you're currently situated, and you're able to pick up that uh, these three continents have been in a stalemate forever war for 200 years or so, and it's it's so much of war that it doesn't even particularly highlight any particular uh, battles anymore. It's just taken as normal. And it's talking about um, the history channel that you're going over. It's talking about uh, the history of Sadvari Ranenvalk and what uh, his grandfather did and what his grand-grandfather did and then his grand-grand-grandmother, who was the Ranenvalk of the southern continent. And it's talking about the history of that dynasty. Nothing uh, particularly immediately relevant, other than Satvari Ranenvalk will be present for the realignment, as all the Ranenvalks will be. Hmm. But it is all Ranenvalks. So my original assessment that they were talking about how the realignment would be bringing together leadership, it's not like a, it's not a caste difference that they're talking about reunifying together. Uh, Ranovalk is associated with Earth, and you know that the phrase roughly translates to royalty, is uh, the two bits of information you have about Ranovalk. Also, the, the character Valk in Ranovalk is associated with Valkai, the planet and god. Damn, damn, damn. So, the, how far out? There was a uh, Unavalk who is from this local area. If we could impersonate possibly them by stealing their clothes or whatever, or making a copy, we could possibly get close to the rocket and trigger this rippling effect. Yeah, I'm just noticing um, that specifically the Howl reward is for a launch failure, not a flight failure, so we don't want it to even really get off the ground if we can avoid it. Um, so that's a good call, Kit. Uh, pretend we're doing an inspection or some sort of royal tour. Um, that might be our best call. I can... I can clarify for you that the launch just means the rocket in general. So a flight failure isn't going to exclude you from that reward. I take back everything I said. I now have two raw eggs on my face. One for each eye. Sorry, no. It's it's because I have limited space when I'm making those uh, little art things for the, for the mission, so it's not fully <laughs> elaborated. Yeah, when it means launch, it means the realignment in general. Make it fail. <laughs> Do we know, like, the process? Did anything I download, was any of it about the process of the realignment? So, I mean, like, does it have to hit atmosphere? Does it have to get to a certain point so we know when to stop it? Yeah, um, you're able to pick up from your tour that the purpose of the, the rocket is to escape the poison that Valkai is punishing them with and speak to the god directly. Oh, so there's nothing that's actually supposed to fix the atmosphere. Not so far as you can tell. In, oh, in... Um, the telemetry data that Kit has does indicate um, that if you compare it to the plans from the tour, there is a, an additional payload in the telemetry that isn't accounted for on the designs shown on the tour. How much is that pay? How much does that payload weigh? Um, it weighs about. Let me Google something. It weighs about three hundred pounds. Any information about what that payload is? Or oh, twenty-one stone, or one hundred and thirty-six kilograms for our international Thanks. listeners. <laughs> 
Um, Thank you. <laughs> no, there's there's no information about what it is. Um, it's not being fed any like fuel or coolant or anything like that. It appears to be um, cargo on the telemetry that you have from it. It's, uh, it's situated just a nuclear missile. It's situated just under the realignment capsule. They're going to nuke the sun. Yes. <laughs> or ignite the atmosphere. I mean, if they what ha also happen to wipe out all life on the planet, it doesn't really matter if it launches. Um, well, it kind of does, because we'll be on the planet. I mean, hopefully by the time it gets to launching, we will be off-world. Hmm. Do they have, okay. like, if the flight gets delayed, do they have a second flight time? Or is it just, there is one opportunity? Or they'll go, they'll, they'll go up when it's ready. Um, the, the reasoning for their launch timing, so far as you can tell, is entirely based on um, culture and religion, which here are kind of one and the same. It's not... It's not an organized religion in the way of Christianity. It's more emergent from the culture. Um, and this is an auspicious day to launch. It's the day of the festival, the, the festival of rockets, traditionally. And um, if it failed to launch today, they would probably wait until the next festival of rockets. With that, are they gonna, are they gonna live that long? Would that count as uh, filling the mission? Fulfilling the mission? They they uh, did request for this launch to fail. They didn't request for later launches to fail. <laughs> yeah, the, the gonna client wish does not expect them. you. Yeah, the client doesn't expect you to come back every year and sabotage the launch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, it's no, just, it should have been more. <laughs> yeah, it's this well, specific rocket. We we could try using my poison explosive on the pilot as a backup and and brittle out the the. This is the problem with this one. I don't know how long it takes between administering it and it. Working. Yeah, so that's actually something that I wanted to ask. Um, on the map that Cinch got, is it um. Like, are there servants' entrances? Like, the society really cares about status. So, are there places where, um, like, the red cloaks would go in and out and be fairly unobserved? For where, sorry? The launch facility? Yeah, for the entire facility. What I'm thinking is um, the Toliali um, probably, like, they go into, you know, like, the. Uh, Natili and Unanvalk quarters and probably like clean and bring them food and stuff like that. Um, and those casts probably don't want to see them. It's probably one of those out of sight, out of mind kinds of things. Um, so I, I'm like scouring the maps that Cinch got for like servants entrances or anything like that. Yeah, you can absolutely find uh, Talali and it it doesn't actually, when it comes to entrances and exits, it doesn't make a distinction between the red robes and the light blue robes. Um, there are entrances that are specifically for the Unan Valk and Rani Valk, but you don't see any that are specifically for Talali or Natili. It seems to be generic entrance for everyone, special entrance for the Unan and Rani Valk. Okay. Um, do we, from the information that she was able to get, do we know where Janam? Tolly Lali, Tolly Lali is in the launch facility, but we don't know yeah. what specific room or anything. Um, I mean, I think it. I think it's trivial to be able to work out from the tour that you did and work out where uh, barracks likely are. Yeah, I mean, I say we two prong it, right, uh, Kit? You're the, you know the big brain of the group. You've got the wrinkliest brain of us all. Uh, you and Whittle go destroy the rocket before it launches, and Cinch and I will go either kill the man or poison the man beyond being able to perform his duties. And 
if you get stopped, how will you talk your way out of it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I've got these note cards, but I'll probably just shoot them. At which point that is we... one way to do it. <laughs> At which point we lose 250... Uh, 2,500 owl. Well... Can... can... Well, Whittle can... You can take Whittle... No, you can't, can you? You can't take Whittle Cypher. I think I, I think... might... I think I might be of some service here. Oh, uh, yeah? You think we could intimidate someone into getting us there? I'd, well, well um, if we intimidated a red robe, probably. I think uh, if we were going to... um. If we, given we've got these two potential solutions, or uh, given that Kit is uh, more mechanically minded than the rest of us, um, if Kit were to handle the uh, try to go after the rocket, um, potentially with uh, Seer, um, Seer Bronson, uh, to um, aid in stealth operations whilst. The rest of us go after the uh, person, uh, or the, the pilot, um, then that's probably our best bets, given that uh, there's someone who can talk their way out of both situations. Yeah, I, I think I could, some means of uh, sabotaging the rocket, even without your. Uh... Special thing. How the, the out of character talk? How does the the timing work for this, Cal? Like, like what would be the time frame for my cipher? Between like one and eighteen days or hours, minutes. Your cipher? Oh yeah, I did bring this up because I thought you were gonna ask. Thank um... you. <laughs> so. I think I got you to roll what activates it, and there's a table here for activation, and the one you rolled was a specified amount of time passes. And okay. um, let me take a look at your character sheet, because I don't think you noted the description that I gave you. No, you, you did, did not. I did want that. First game. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not going to blame you. Um, I, I think you. I think you specifically said that she didn't know how long it yeah, was. Yeah, no, I, it, that was the thing. Like, I didn't know how that was I one did. of the things about it. Yeah, yeah like okay. I did not know how long it would take. Well, then, pa past me will stick to that and say that you don't. Know, you don't know how long it will take. Yes, but not <laughs> character me is how do we find that out? Um. Like what's you what mechanic? What mechanic? Test a little bit of it. It's a cipher, so you're not really supposed to do that. But in this case, for sake of story, you can squirt a little bit out and wait to see how long <laughs> until it turns from benign into an explosive compound. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ideally, uh, he is, you know, in the ship when he explodes. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you do that? Yeah, we're gonna see how long it takes. Yeah. I'm just like okay. Like an itty bitty tiny drop on the table or something. Yeah. Um. Give me. Uh. How long do you want it to be? The exact amount of time it needs to be for me to give it to him and for him to be flying in his rocket. That depends on how long before he gets in the rocket you give it to him. So how long do you want it to be? <laughs> I, Are you I, going to administer it two hours before launch? Are you going to administer it a day before? What, how long do you want this? Stuff to take. Uh, yeah. Let's 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 say like half a day. Let's say like like it takes like four hours. That's how much I want it to take. Four hours. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, what I'll do is 
Um, give me a 1d3. On a 3, uh, it is 4 hours exactly. On a 2, it takes 8 hours. And on a 1, it takes 2 hours. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, 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 cool. I don't think I did uh, that right. Slash roll. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Like that, just with a, a slash in front of it. <laughs> it, yeah. it, you you yeah. watch it, you squirt it out on the table. I think like it doesn't do anything for a while, and you get... I don't know, do you watch it like a hawk, or do you lose interest? I don't know, like, I'm probably sitting there fiddling on my computer trying to download or trying to find stuff on the internet and yeah, look up every now and then, because Cinch has the attention span of a gnat sometimes. Yeah. You're just watching what appears to be this culture's version of satire where <laughs> someone wearing a red robe has a green robe on top and is wearing some kind of garishly coloured mask and is making, obviously, insulting gestures. And uh, when suddenly you're distracted by a from the table. <laughs> Excellent. Hey guys, yeah. I think my stuff blew up. Yeah, you check the time and it's four hours exactly. Perfect. So now we have that. Do we know exactly what time the launch is? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. The red and green robe with the green robe on top figure on your screen has just pulled off a giant fake nose and is waggling it at the audience. <laughs> that's, that, that's great. Mm-hmm. Eating a bowl of cereal, Kit <laughs> and kind of spurts mm-hmm. milk from his mouth. Yeah. You, you take this to be a very cutting satire as to the culture of the Eastern region to value large noses in beauty. Yeah. Mm. Bit derivative, but yeah, speared yeah. by uh, Tomasi Ranenvalk, the leader of the Eastern Continent, who has a, a very prominent Roman nose, which um, yeah, people get surgery to look like in in the Eastern Continent. Hmm. Yeah, this is uh, some northern comedy making fun of them for that particular habit. I'm just like like playing with my nose while I see it slightly like do I need to be self conscious yeah. about this? Because <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> my nose oh, okay, guys? <laughs> I mean, I would assume so. <laughs> I accidentally give players insecurity about beauty standards from a sci-fi setting. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> oh, Cyberpunk wants your number. <laughs> don't, don't worry I can assure you I look like an actor a lot in real life too <laughs> yeah. I like my hair really is pink but you know kind of want oh. to make an alien species that's entirely human but all of their skin is lip skin oh oh jeez oh. oh, right. they have giant chapsticks Oh, Hi, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the horror part of the, uh, the episode. Yeah, brief diversion. Uh, like back to our regularly time. scheduled programming. Yeah, it, your poison <laughs> takes gonna... exactly four hours. It's going to start showing up on the sheets. No lip skin. <laughs> All right, so four hours prior to the launch, we have to administer Thanks for the this. Thanks for the nightmare fuel, Cal. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> so four hours before, we have to administer this poison to our, our target if we want to do a two-pronged attack. I mean, four hours, that might be plenty of time to do the poison in first and then immediately afterwards go straight to the rocket, right? Yeah. We have to split up that way. To have someone on Overwatch as well. Mm-hmm. I think ha- you... Oh, go ahead. Uh, just really fast. You say the word Overwatch, and Seymour wetly and neatly slaps his uh, sniper rifle. Yeah. Oh. As it hears Overwatch, it tingles in your hands. <laughs> if only. Oh. 
Hold on. Well, I, I imagine there's a, a cliff or something, or maybe some promontory to uh, yeah. launch the rocket from. Yeah. You know when you watch someone eat a lemon and like your own mouth salivates? Yeah, the <laughs> You say the word Overwatch and the rifle lever action self lubricates. God, I hate this forsaken thing. <laughs> and I've had guns that actually yell at me, and that thing's just kind of. Oh, El Destino, I hate this thing. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I, uh, yeah. Are we cutting yeah. to the plan in action? I think yeah. so, right? Yeah, I think. Sure. Um, who do we want to follow first? The rocket group or the pilot group? Okay. Pilot group is happening first. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, who, is in, uh, who is in that adventurous group of agents? Uh, Finch. Cinch and Wattle. Is that it? Yeah. No muscle's gonna come with us, guys? Uh, uh, we're gonna use? <laughs> yeah, Kit will go as well. Okay. Um, Both of the people who speak the language? I, I think um, I think Rick has uh, had to leave for a second, but okay. I presume he's coming with us. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, for the sake of Overwatch, I guess I will stay out and wait for the contingent to arrive who are going to do the inspection. Sorry, having to deal with some stuff. That's okay. Uh, yeah, don't don't stress. We've got five players, so it's... Yeah, uh, pop back in when Planning you can. to move halfway up the country. Plenty fun. Mm. Mm. Um... I can see how that takes your time. Well, I mean, for, for you, that's either... You know, that... That ain't that far. No. No, that's a day trip. Um, what were you doing, Seymour? Sorry. Um, I think it makes sense. So if the four of them go <laughs> to the pilot's room, they should be able to subdue him with almost no problem. Um, I'll stay out on a cliff on the whole Overwatch thing that we were talking about. And so um, if the leader of the continent that we're on, whose name... I did not forget. That uh, would leader... be Sapni Ranivalk. When Sapni Ranivalk uh, shows up um, and he, they do their inspection and see that like all of the flaps and bits and bobs work correctly, then I can uh, calms the rest of the team to go and do the sabotage. Absolutely. I don't think you can find a cliff, but I think you can find... Um... The top of the market building in town. I think you know your way up there, and I think you can see the launch site from there with your rifle. Yeah. Which, again, I think in that case, it's a a matter of time rather than difficulty. So you manage to do that while the while the pilot group are doing their thing. Perfect. So we find. A servant's entrance, more or less, or a worker's entrance to go in to look for his the barracks. So there's a, a general entrance, and then there is the the Unenvalk and Rani Valk entrance. There's not really a servant's entrance. Okay. There's for everyone, and then there's VIP. <laughs> to the everyone entrance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Main yeah main entrance. We don't have the robes or. Key cards or whatever to get through. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, do you go via the tour? Or are yep. you looking for like a, a staff entrance? I think the tour makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Same deal. I think the the Unavalk at the top of the queue goes. Um, <laughs> you liked it so much, you came back. <laughs> One of course. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Are you saying you aren't excited for this tremendous event we've all been waiting 12 years for? I have to admit, working here every day and watching people do the tour, I'm a little sick of it. But you're right. 
I should I should realign myself with the realignment. It is very important. It lets out an overly hearty laugh. A bit very nervous. good. Mm-hmm. Seeing Kit, I, I don't know where I am in all of this. Sorry. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're there in your environment suit. I, I guess hearing Kit laugh, I will also laugh. Mm, the the Unenvalk looks pleased that his the uh, his hilarious joke was taken in in the manner that it should be. Uh, clicks his clicker, notes your names down, and uh, ushers you to go inside. Is it is it just as busy now as it was before? Like it's oh, four yeah. hours before before oh. lunch, would it be busier? Or... Oh yeah, yeah, it is absolutely packed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. The street the streets are like as you were walking your way here. Sorry, I should have noted. Yeah, this is 4 hours before launch. Yeah, the streets are strangely empty. Like you walk past the market, no one's going in or out. But um as you approach the the launch facility and where the realignment is soon to begin, yeah, there are there are crowds of people and the queue that you stood in was three times the length of the one that you stood in three days ago. Wow. Okay. Well, at least it'll be easier to maybe sneak through the crowd, find our way out of the tour, and blend in with the staff again. Yeah. I think you note that if you look around, like, over to where the launch pad is, at the edge of the, the protective fencing, there are um, people who have been camping out by the fencing for the perfect view of the launch. Hmm. Which, uh, the tents are all squat, grey, plastic shells. They're not tents how you or I would think of them. They're like blister packaging. They're very uh, small, cramped, presumably uncomfortable. Yeah, people are there for the biggest event of of the decade. So everyone believes this realignment is going to, like, do something. Like, it's going to save them. They think the atmosphere is going to return to normal, is what you've picked up. Yeah. Their god is not going to be angry at them anymore. Okay. Yeah. Their god to um, Valkai... Um, you've been able to pick up by Kit or Whittle telling you, translating for you. Um, depending on who you ask, is father, mother, non-gender specific parent. Um, it is the planet itself and everything that isn't the planet itself, depending on who you ask. It's the core of the planet, it's the mantle. Uh, there are various varying interpretations and Several heated debates, likely the cause of a lot of conflict over the years, is the specific interpretation of uh, the nature of Valkai. But yeah, did I pick up at all what caused, what specifically caused Valkai to be angry? No, uh, the, the avatar of Valkai who appeared and gave them the the blessings of Valkai. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're sneaking around. Yeah, I imagine. I imagine that we're really like kind of like kind of being pushed by the crowd. Like, yeah, yeah. You all the, you all can the... see the past. Yeah, the the vast majority are red robed, and if you make your intention known that you want to move past them, then they will let you go past. Um, okay, well, so oh, yeah. just kind of like. Coughing and sort of like <clears throat> sort of clearing our yeah. throat through the crowd. Yeah, you're able to to make your way around. You get some dirty looks from red robe tour, tour guides, and one of them looks like they're gonna say something, but decides not to at the last moment. Looking at the crowd of people that they're hurting, and it's more than their job's worth. And uh, you end up in the gift shop, which, in your estimation, is the closest point to the barracks that the tour goes through. There's uh, t-shirts um, that are invariably red and light blue, where, where the symbology has been altered to include um, 
patterns of realignment, um, discordant elements of, of fire that are typically present on red robes merged with the other three elements to make a, a symbol of realignment that also spells out uh, the symbols and for Valkai in like a fractal pattern going smaller and smaller. Yeah, All I, like I, I, intricate are symbology. Are there any snow yeah. globes? I don't think there's any snow globes. No. <laughs> we are going to ruin their whole, just their whole week. <laughs> Like, Teo, like, roll, like, a, roll a d100. If you get 100, there's snow globes. Wow. Like, in before a 100 is rolled. Ah. Uh, uh, upper end, but not quite. No snow globes. You wanna, but, uh, like, what are shiny in be- earrings? <laughs> in before an 80 is rolled. <laughs> Can't you uh, spend XP to reroll? I'm not going to spend XP to reroll on it. No, okay. I'm going to find something else to steal. And it was hugely headless. Just saying. I whisper to um, Clinch. Oh, uh, Cinch, sorry. Um, you grab one of those uh, blue shirts. We can get it signed by. Uh, the pilot. Oh, yeah. It's gonna like walk up stealthy, it's like grab one of the shirts and shove it in my bag. Make a, a speed roll difficulty three. This place is busy, it's not too difficult. Uh. Oh, <laughs> twenty! Says, what do I get the whole rack? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, I think I think this is worth a cipher. Oh, I think this is worth a cipher. Um, Damn. I too rob the gift shop. <laughs> do you get a natural twenty on your stealth roll? No. <laughs> What's more impressive is he's robbing it from the mall building. Yeah. <laughs> and you have a uh, boomerang <laughs> bullet. Major effect. I think this, this cipher is called Valkai Memento. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's type 1d6. And its effect is... Um, it's a piece of fabric that is so so intricately crafted and designed that it will dazzle anybody for a round. Excellent. Uh, I have two ciphers. You and can drop remember. one to, to take the memento, or you could give it to uh, someone that you're with. Okay. I can't remember what Cutter's Cacophony was. <laughs> you really need to start writing down these descriptions when I give them to you. <laughs> Tell me I need to do, do stuff like that. Um, I uh, Cuts Cacophony, I think, has a very similar effect because I am uncreative. Uh... <laughs> to make this choice easier for you, I already have my one out of one cipher. Cutter's Cacophony is this howling battle cry hinders all actions by taken by hostile creatures within short range for a number of turns equal to this cipher's level. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. it, it says my cipher level, my, my cipher limit is two. I think that's wrong. No, it should be two. All right, then I, I can grab it if you want. Yeah, yeah. You can grab it. Cool, okay. So, Memento. Of how do you spell the name of this planet? V A double L K A I. Valkai. Oh, right. sorry. Single L double I. Sorry, wrong way around. Valkai. Valkai, yep. And then 
dazzles for one round. Yeah. All right. We didn't expect the gift shop to be where someone found a cipher, but there you go. They're just giving it away. Yeah. Uh, Do I get the t-shirt too? Pipe. Where do I? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can just (laughs) pipe. So I have with the t-shirt and the memento. Mm Mm-hmm. We try and it is goes through the door that's closest to the barracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're able to find like a staff door. Yeah. But, uh... Can we just sneak in there? Do we need some kind of distraction? Oh, you got you got a twenty. You can you can <laughs> steal from <laughs> under someone's nose right now. Yeah, you can sneak through the the door. Oh, perfect! You totally sneak through the door. Yeah. No one questions you. It's so it's so busy that it's hard to keep track of everybody, and you just manage, you manage to sneak through. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Inside is uh, a row of inside is um it looks like a hospital corridor. It's that generic kind of everything looks the same. There's doors to the left and right. It's very clean, very Spartan. All right. Yeah. Let's see, so looking for a guy. Well, he's got to ingest this stuff. So, so we need to, like... I think he does. I think you had it in... You uh, had it, it in a had... syringe, right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. You just got to poke him. Yeah. Um, um, looking at the, the symbols on the doors, try and find the pilot's room. Or mm-hmm. the preparation yep. room. Yeah, you're able to read it. Um, you're able to find... Um, I think it translates to um, the place where the sacred pilot will prepare themselves to align the elements of Valkai together with the will of the people and the the wish of the, the Rani Valk, but it translates to pilot locker room. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, sheepishly knock on the uh, knock on the door. Yeah, um, you hear like a a hustle and a scuff and a, a squeak, and as uh, someone comes to the door, and uh, you open it up and you recognize immediately the the person from the uh, the model on the tour, and um, they they kind of say nervously. Um, is it time already? It is. I have. It is many. It, I. I'm not due for two and a half hours. I was preparing myself, reading the holy book. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, Grand Eliti, if it is time to go now. It, it, it's yeah. not. It's not yet time. Um. I. I just wanted a, a quick word. Um, oh, i I assumed because of the suit that we were. Going out. Uh, uh, in due time. In due time. Yes. Um. What is it that you have to tell me? Is is it from the the Unenvelk, the Rani Velk? Have they arrived? Uh the 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 Rani Velk are coming soon. Um. I I was sent ahead to um. To to get your um. Ah, oh, what's the word? What's the word? Signature. Um, also, uh, I think it translates as an idiom to like the words you put on paper that show the truth of who you are, and it's a bit weird. Mm-hmm. And you're able to like adjust and the second time give the appropriate cultural explanation. Yeah. Ah, oh, um, you need my approval for something. <laughs> this is the first time. Uh- Damn. But uh, it is just um a memento of um uh, of the uh, the elements uh, lighting. Um uh, the the Rani Valks will would like this uh the, the keepsake. Uh, uh forgive me for being so bold, Naliti, but 
You want this. This is for your family. Yes. It's okay. You can tell me the truth. You're not the first. I, I, I'm sorry. I, sorry. I tried to fool you. Uh, so right through me. It, so it, like, every <laughs> member of staff has come to me for this. Do not think yourself. It is my my <clears throat> humble pleasure to be able to do this for you. Please. Can, can my my family come in? Yes, please. I was I was meditating. It is soon time to go, as you are well aware. Like the realignment is soon. I am rejoicing. I'll Hit. take out the memento for him to sign. <laughs> Hit places uh, their hand on that on the pilot's shoulder, is like like almost like in like reverence, mm. and it's kind of like beckoning uh, uh, Zinch closer. Mm-hmm. And uh, Finch just like like has the the syringe sort of hidden, like in the hand of her her suit, and kind of goes forward and sort of bows and takes his hand and very quickly like pokes him with Ooh, it. Oh, okay. Um, give me uh, give me a speed roll difficulty five. Five. Yeah. I, any uh, way that we can help with this. Yeah, was, you certainly can. I, I just set the difficulty. You tell me how you make it easier. Uh, Kit is like gonna like hand him the pen like in that moment, like thinking it up. Yeah. So like... Absolutely, that's one asset from help. And I will have the memento up and just like holding it up like a very excited child. Oh, like shoving a map <laughs> in a tourist's face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. So that's two assets, which brings it down to a three. And... Anything from your skills? Well, there's stealth. And... I'm, I'm, I'm tricking him pretty hard here. So many lies and trickery. No, I think you can have one from the combination of lies and trickery and stealth, because those are more social situations than injecting someone without them noticing. Listen, oh. the lie is, I didn't mean to prick you. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the lie is, you know, I yeah. caught a... a so, just, a... just don't just don't roll a six. Uh, just don't roll a five, even. And you're fine. I'm totally going you to... You got a 75% chance of success. I, you're so kind. 75% like... chance? I played XCOM, I'm I don't five... like those odds. <laughs> I'm totally. I'm applying an effort. There's an effort. Okay, I'm down yeah. to one speed. Okay. All right. I can't watch, guys. Just... You have a, a 17 out of 20. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can spend an XP to reroll if you'd like. Oh. And again, I will offer you a GM intervention instead if you don't reroll. Like the, the flip of 2xp. <laughs> mm-hmm. what's, what's the GM intervention? Uh, the GM intervention is that the pilot is going to be so alarmed that they freak out. Um. Out of character. That could prevent the launch. True. Unlikely, but it could. By freak out, I mean like raise the alarm. Okay, that would. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just to be explicit, because I don't want to like mislead you with what I, what I tell you. <laughs> Alternatively, out of character, we do have that thermite grenade. <laughs> Packed facility full of people, they hear a (laughs) from the direction of their pilot that they've been training for ten years. Okay, so as as an alternative to um, I'm just saying, um, I I have. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pressure you here. Since are you re-rolling your failure or not? Oh, 
Sorry to interrupt you, Ethel, but let's keep a sense of urgency. Wait, I can't even re-roll it because I only have one for speed. Like, how does that work? You don't have to spend play. an effort, yeah. You I'm pretty sure I did, I would. You could do it again without the effort, which would be difficulty three, which is a coin flip. Well, it was difficulty three last time. Wait, it should have been... It was difficulty five, two from help, one for your skill. It should have been difficulty two anyway, which would have made it difficulty one, which you still failed. But if you did it again, it would be difficulty two, not difficulty three. Man, do you hear the comforting words of our of our glorious leader? You would have still failed, but you would have still failed. <laughs> I, I mean, listen, I'm just saying. Like, like, I promise, it, I'm not. I'm gonna bring this up in every other conversation. If you would have like, succeeded, I, I would have gone back and said, "Wait, no, you succeeded." That <laughs> is why I I said that in a. But yes, you're right. It was a bit mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. can, it's it's I'm it's bad. the English it's the English it's the English you know I'm not being sarcastic being sarcastic yeah okay, yeah I can't uh, just sort of deadpan I hit submit just tell me what it is five oh okay like, like I don't do math did I pass or fail you failed oh. you do gain an XP so. <laughs> Yeah, you you don't uh don't lose anything for that role, and you can choose someone else to give an experience points to. Hey, space cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have to do some rooting and tooting and shooting in a little bit, so I'll take it happily. <laughs> it was all going so smoothly. Yeah. So um. You, Wait, you go. I mean, I not have my sa- I still get to have my poison cipher since it's failed so badly. You've used it. Um, but, I didn't, have... but I failed. No, you have injected Janam successfully. Oh. The poison oh, okay. is in their system. But what Janam is going to do is grab their hand back up to their chest and go, oh. What? What the? <gasps> um. They're gonna use a word which I don't have. Uh, they're gonna call. They're gonna say, "Kakashan," which um, to Whittle or Kit you understand to mean like the equivalent is ancestral enemy. It means like um, instinctual instinctual threat. And in this context, it's talking about the southern continent. And uh, they're gonna. Uh, put their hand to their collarbone, press a button, and go, um, Satvari is sent, Satvari is sent spies, traitors. Nice. Nice. Uh, I'm okay with that. Gakashan is the, the word. Can, can we run, like, can we run, guys? Um, question. Yeah. As we're, as we're as we're running out, could I throw the thermite grenade to try to distract, cause a distraction? If you want to throw a thermite grenade, you can throw a thermite grenade. But uh, would it make for an effective distraction? Like, I mean, if it took out a wall and poisoned everyone with gas, yeah. I, I was thinking. Yeah. Hitting him over the head and trying knocking him out, but can can we do that before you know we raise the alarm? He raises the alarm. Yeah, you you have a few moments before security are going to arrive. <laughs> right. I, th- I um, think we just yeah. I think we just run for it. Yeah. Can I argue that I spent two experience for a short term benefit, which is a flashback in this moment? Depends on the scope of the flashback. I want to have given them some of my empty whiskey bottles. <laughs> and I want just to be like, we arrange a scene where it looks like the guy was drinking before his big flight. If, like, you've. So, this is a flashback where you were, where you were like, 
what if it doesn't go smoothly and you go we'll make him we'll make them look drunk yes sure you yeah you can spend two xp on that do sure we, do we even know if they have whiskey on this planet well Somebody went to the marketplace and we had four days worth of reconnaissance. So, <laughs> I, I mean, all air. it is a culturally appropriate whiskey, probably made out of cockroach bile. Cool. Mm, yeah. Seymour does not drink this one. <laughs> yummy, <laughs> yummy. In my tummy. Kind of tastes like rum. Not going to lie. Guys. So, like what rum. I. Uh, more what American beer. Yeah, right. So what I think I do here is I give Sir Theodric my stun stick and the drink. And I'm like, big guy, I'm going to need you to, you know, hit him with the shocky end. I, I know how fighting works. I don't know. It's not a sword. I, I don't know what you not people do with your jousting and your horses and your Horse. jousting. What was the yeah. word he called us again? Uh, I will. Yeah. I think it was. Kakashan. Um, Kakashan. Will... There you go. Okay. Okay. So now that I've spent that two XP for that, um, just go ahead and roll might. Right? Like I don't actually know how this works a hundred percent. Sure. Um, so the intent is you're going to attack them now? Well, not yeah. And hopefully stun them and knock them sure. out. Sure. Okay. You, you, can get, you can get one in, I think, before the security arrive. Um, this is going to be a difficulty four might roll. Um, so does combat force apply here? Uh, does choice melee weapons? Yes. So that's all melee weapons. No shame. Excuse me correctly, so pipe. Uh, I guess I'm gonna set it to four. What a, what are you skill are you using? Uh, I was just checking combat prowess. Okay, you do an extra damage. So what did you say the difficulty was four? Difficulty four, yep. And uh, which um, setting have you put this on? Uh, I will set it to four. Okay, um, just for context, if you set it to zero or two, it will still stun, and it will be one easier to hit. Uh, let's go to two, then. So that sets us to three. Um, um, yep. If Kit attacks at the same time, like, can that aid? Like, attacks with what? Uh, I have this. Yeah, I don't have a Train skill or anything, but I do. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could. I I think it's pushing it a bit. If okay. if their attack misses and we go to your attack, security will be looking at you as you do this attack. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I don't think there's any other skills that I've got that would fly here. You could apply an effort is the, the other thing. Yeah, so in total that brings it down to what, two? That would bring it down to two, yep, and you, your might pull would go down to 13. Uh, go down to 14, because you have an edge. It's not really a, a combat-heavy episode, so your pulls are going to be pretty healthy, but... Um... I mean, here's the thing. I wanted to murder Hobo my way through this. Y'all have effectively stopped me from doing that. I'm still not the one killing anybody. <laughs> uh, effort to the roll is one after spending that two, yes? Yes. All right. And just do this moral. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, Theodric, gain an XP. Or you can um, re-roll this by spending an yeah, XP. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Okay. So, uh, I don't get to spend effort again, so I don't think. You can spend effort again. There's another All right, two so points. Yeah. All right, so I'll do that after I do the roll. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. Please, Louise. On the bright side. Oh, apparently, wow. Well, apparently, you know. 
the planet doesn't want to let everybody. Yeah, you you gain that XP back. Can we make the argument that Theodric gains like double? Because that's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, like, not. That that's you an oof, but I would statistically not unlikely. Yeah, you can give uh, one XP to someone else. Um, you know what? Hey, don't forget. You know what? I, I'm gonna give it to Whittle. Cool. And <laughs> fuck me. Yeah. This GM intrusion is your attack hits just as security arrive and they see you sticking an electrified stun stick into the glorious pilot of the realignment capsule. So, so my plan was going to be that when security arrives was to spin identity to pretend that we're supposed to be here, but uh, that's a bit out the window now. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, there was definitely uh, non-combat ways this could have gone. Um, yeah, I just everybody... thought this was a good idea. <laughs> yeah, everybody roll initiative. Oh, uh, shit. For initiative, I looked it up. What you do is you set a target number, and then we all roll according to the target number, and the people who beat it go before, then them, then the people who rolled less. Yes. So, the tar- I've been doing the target number secretly. Okay, so difficulty zero then. Uh, or... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and we can use yeah, it's great. Ye- Got some speed. Oh. Um, bear in mind that I have an inability as well. Mm-hmm. It should do it automatically if you rolled. If you click on the scale, it would do it automatically. I should have done the skill. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Flutter, Flutter, uh, Cinch, Kit, and Seymour all beat. Uh, you get to go before the security guards go. Uh, there's two of them. They are in light blue robes, and uh, they are carrying some form of projectile weapon. I have an idea. I get one. Define a good idea. And we're all so I I I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with a uh, germite thir- th- <laughs> threnad. I'm bad. Oh, uh, cinch kit or Seymour can go. <laughs> so here's the problem with the grenade. Actually. <laughs> The grenade will vaporize itself, right? Will there be yeah. anything left of a thermite grenade? I would assume not. Like, oh. someone take your turn, or these guards are gonna go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, someone go before me, because I've, I've got opportunistic. Okay. Thermite grenade. <laughs> You're gonna use one? Yeah, why not? Okay, uh, this is a, a difficulty for, I think, for throwing things. I think it's might. Might. Difficulty three might, sorry. Difficulty three might. I'm going to spend an effort. Might. You can't do worse than me with the stun stick. Yeah, if you fail this, it's going to be the you're all within immediate range of it. Basically, Seymour comes home with like 10,000 no, uh, shillings. <laughs> Yeah, uh-huh. I mean, definitely not, but... <laughs> hey! Yes. Yeah. Okay. You throw this grenade, it arcs perfectly in between the feet of these uh, two guards. Uh, it lands behind them. They both simultaneously look down and behind them, startled. And then uh, the grenade... And the corridor that is behind them erupts into a brief gout of flame as uh, they stumble forward, yelling in pain. Run, 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 run! <laughs> can, can, can we run, or do we still have to combat them? They're, they're still up. Oh, okay. Uh... They, <laughs> both, they both appear significantly hurt, but they're still up. Uh, Can I ask an absolutely insane question? Sure. 
does the rocket and their weird religion in any way interact with the bleed? There are people who are bleed sensitive on this planet. I don't think you have any information as regards that. So the problem is, is that my only magic ability is the fact that I am resistant to magic. But what I'm trying to like argue for here is um, I don't know anything about the tech of the rocket or anything like that. But I'm trying to figure out if there's a way that I can, with my sniper rifle, like hit something or otherwise disrupt something that I think has a connection with the metaphysical. You can't currently see the rocket. You're inside a, a barracks in the launch. No, I'm not in the barracks. I'm outside on oh, top right. of the you're mall. Oh, right. You're on the roof of the marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can take a shot at the rocket. Um, I, I, <laughs> I don't know if you have any particular spot to aim for, but... <laughs> well, can we... Uh, do I have to spend XP to do a flashback, or...? Oh, it depends. What's the? I was just saying. Uh, I was like out showing uh, everyone like the schematics and like. Sure. What, yeah. Like, yeah. Physical weak points on the rocket. Yeah, we can assume the team shared information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Seymour, you know where like fuel lines are, coolant lines are. The yeah. The weird blank spot in the middle where you're not sure what it is. Obviously, everything is going horrifically tits up. So, um, so bad to I, that, it. <laughs> that that is the professional term for it. Yeah. So here's what I'm thinking, and you can tell me whether or not this makes any sense as well. I am going to try and shoot the fuel line, but I also want to see if my Putsa Junta scavenger scanner will allow me, with my sniper rifle, to gain an asset on hitting this fuel tank line. Uh, activating an asset is typically an action. Fuck, okay. That's cool. Uh, I just so need... an asset when locating an object. Yeah, that would be like if you were aiming at it and then your next turn, you took a shot. Well, because here's the problem is, is that they're going to have to flee. There's just no... Actually, if they flee... Ugh. Okay. I, mean, I will remind you that the holy pilot, blessed above all, is injected with poison that will go off in four hours. Yes. Okay. Does the shuttle have any kind of cloaking technology? It, we asked this before. They're not. They don't have the tech to scan it. No, I mean, if I fly it over the base to pick y'all up, <laughs> that will be incredibly obvious. <laughs> So there's no way to hide that. You can hide it from scanners, but from the eyes of thousands, probably not. <laughs> you are specifically looking to the skies right now. <laughs> <sighs> uh, okay. It's the Festival of Rockets. I mean, maybe you can... I don't so, know. That, that would be a difficulty 10 roll to hide from everybody's view. Okay. Here's what I want to do instead, then, because the pilot did say it's traitors from the southern continent. Instead of hitting the fuel line... No, actually, the fuel line will get the biggest rise out of everybody. I'm going to try and hit the fuel line. Sorry for faffing about back and forth. Um, uh, I think this shot is, like, difficulty six. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I don't think that claiming, like, because we have to leave the facility anyways, and that's going to take probably at least a turn. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact uh, like, uh, need for speed, but you might have enough time to aim first, then shoot. Well, what I'm thinking is, is... We definitely poisoned the pilot, so yeah. hitting the th hitting the rocket itself is no longer even that important. Um, what is, however, important is 
distracting all of the guards from your exit. Because if I can get the fuel line to explode, none of the guards are going to be looking at you guys. They're going to be looking at my position. And then the only thing I have to worry about is getting off the roof of this mall. Um, yep. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, missile hit is probably going to be distracting. Yeah. And here's here's the other thing, is that I want to distract the guards from converging on your location as fast as possible, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Difficulty six. Mm -hmm. I am going to spend uh, one from my speed to go ahead and apply effort. I do not have anything else that helps in this situation. So let's go. Okay. I'm going to spend mm. a point of experience to use my advantage, which I get from being a lucky scout. Oh, cool. Yeah. You can add three to the reroll. Very cool. Yes. I didn't even know you had that ability. That's that's nice. because I've never had to use it before this exact moment under a very yeah. certain particular set of circumstances. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh. Elish, I told I told you this was going to get interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so plus three, plus three gets me to twenty. Do I get to add three to damage? Uh, yep. Or you can have a major effect. Uh, the major effect is the fuel line explodes, distracting all of the rest of the guards in the facility. Mm, can I argue down to it partially ignites, creating like a pyrotechnic display? I don't know if a, a single bullet impact would make reactive fuel go. What? What? We are in a we are in a movie. To be fair, <laughs> all right, like fine. A, a movie yeah. directed by Michael Bay, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's just fuel splashing across the tarmac, that's still... Yeah. So you make this shot of shots. We get this camera. We see inside the, the launch facility, we see this attempt to, to jab the pilot go terribly wrong and security come in and then a grenade gets thrown. And as the explosion goes off, we see the explosion from the perspective of the camera outside the facility. We see flame um, gout out uh, pressing up against one of the windows and we cut over to Seymour who sees it, focuses down the scope and you tell me what your shot looks like. So I think I think everything that we just described happens too, right? Like Seymour's like oh fuck, do I get the ship? Do I do this? And like mm -hmm. the entire time the crosshairs is, is like wavering over the fuel line right? And he's like fuck it I just gotta take the shot. So he, he like lays down, he lines up the shot, and he's about to miss. And I think the sniper rifle twitches in Seymour's hands, and he's like, what? And he, like, jerks back because it's so disorienting and gross. The crosshairs <laughs> perfectly line up over the fuel line, his jerk pulls back on the trigger, and then the, the bullet goes out and hits it. Um, the so bang and the living ammo. The thing. Save the day. Yeah. Mm. I'll never fucking admit it to children of the vein, but the good thing this isn't being recorded the... or anything. Yeah. <laughs> the bang of the living ammo sounds like the eruption of a seed pod. There's ten times more violent. Um, there's a, a wet spurt as it emerges from the end of the barrel, flies through the poison <laughs> air, the, the coating of the bullet already being stripped and burned away as it travels the short distance through the atmosphere. But uh, enough of the core of the, the, the bullet still remains as it hits and ruptures the fuel line in a, a perfect weak spot and uh, a, a spark of flame ignites, mixing with the corrosive atmosphere, quickly accelerating up the fuel line and into the one of the, the hooped stands, which is uh, on fire. Uh, alarm bells start going off, the crowds are all... <laughs> People are crying and wailing, gnashing their teeth. Uh, if it was safe to do so, ripping their clothes from their chests. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> thank, thank you, artist. Uh, we're running. 
Like, I'm running. You guys coming? There are two security guards in your way. Oh. Blocking oh, the can exit. I just, can I do the opportunistic thing? How did that work again? Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you they... make an attack and it's easier for you. So for you, it'd be difficulty two. Okay. And that's a might or... What do I attack Speed, with? Uh, what are you attacking with? What weapon? Um, my cutter's blade. Can I, do I have that yet? Yes, Wait, you do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to whip out the cutter's blade. Yep. Use uh, the... Difficulty to might roll. Okay. Uh... <clears throat> Two. And I'm going to do you an effort. Eight, because that's for my edges, right? Am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did I? Did... Finally! Yeah. Succeed and plus two damage. Yeah, you kill or incapacitate one of them easily. Imagine yeah. succeeding on the first try. Couldn't be this fucking game. Yeah. <laughs> it was going so smoothly right up until the crucial moment. <laughs> I was just like, ah, oh, son of a bitch. Yeah. It, All right. it was going so smoothly until it wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's looking at the initiative order. Um, Theodric, make a difficulty three speed roll for me, please. Uh, this is you're being shot at. Uh, there's nothing I can do to reduce that. You can spend effort to reduce it. You can use a skill. It's the same as a normal roll. It's just All a right. defensive one. Uh, I'll lower the pool after I do the roll. Yep, that's fine. Success. Yeah, it, I mean, you tell uh, me it's... you get hit, it doesn't damage your environment suit, uh, maybe is caught in the rubberized folds and just nicks it, but not deep enough to, to damage. Yeah, and, uh, for that effect. Whittle and Theodric, you, you, you can go. Your more, likely more combat prepared I... than me. I mean, you say that, but... <laughs> there is uh, one guard remaining stood in your way, looking very hurt from an ex a convenient explosion. That guy just shot at you. That guy did just shoot at me. So, uh... I guess I will get out my uh, traditional Sihian arming sword. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. And, uh... Uh, yeet, yeet, enemy delete. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, so, difficulty, difficulty three. Sorry, yeah, I'm supposed to say things here. Yeah, uh, I'm going. I'm going to spend an effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then... you you incapacitate. Oh wait, oh, no, that's your I... previous roll. Yeah. Uh, effort to damage. It has damage. the same HP as the damage your weapon does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's saying effort to damage. I'm guessing that also applies from the previous spent of effort for this? No, no okay. it's separate. You can apply okay. effort to hit or to damage. Not both. Okay. okay. Damage three. Why is uh, damage because, three? because I have combat prowess for melee weapons. Oh, you use two light weapons. Yes. Ah, no, he's still standing. Yeah. Uh, you, you, uh, is looking incredibly weak. If it was on a scale, we'd say he had about one left of his health points. <laughs> if it was on a scale. Yeah, if it, if it was on an arbitrary scale, maybe like one to nine, it would be a, be a one. Uh huh, uh huh. <laughs> I think that's all I can do, unless because it's two light weapons, I can make two attacks, but I don't... I don't think so. Yeah, oh, what so. does your attack with two weapons do? Wields two weapons at once. Uh, let me find that. I'm gonna look it up. Wields... Why, why are you not wanting to work with me here? Wields two weapons... 
dual light wield. Oh yeah, that just lets you. Oh, you can make two separate attacks on your turn as a single action. Yeah. Oh, okay then. Um, like I said, eat, eat, eat enemy delete. Hog uh, and champ. Is uh, there same same deal. You can only uh, use effort once though, so there's difficulty three. All right. All right. Um... Success. Yeah. Your your first yes. swipe doesn't quite do it, but your second slash cuts this guard down to the quick. Yeah, I just like first flick is like a slash across the chest. The second one tears open the No, they don't have an Enviro suit on because they're indoors. Never mind. I was gonna say tear open you, the neck. You do, everything. they they don't. They have like some yeah, crude so, body armor. Yeah, so just mm. chink chink. For purposes of time, because it's uh, five minutes to the end. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what, we, what we'll do is, um, I assume you all flee. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think we get a montage of shots as we see the horrified faces of the crowd. We see Seymour. Um, what do we see from from your point of view? Are you climbing down from the when we cut to Seymour? You, what are you up to? Um, I think. So Seymour just like he's gonna fucking fully like body it because he doesn't really he's not necessarily very skilled at this. He's just gonna jump off the roof, right? Like he's just gonna just try and sprint straight for the um shuttle. And what Running he's going to do is us. Yeah. The what shuttle. he's gonna do is Yeah, what he's gonna do is he's gonna take off the environmental suit with the style and markings before he gets to the shuttle because he does have a rebreather. Um and even though that's not going to give him a ton of, uh, or no, it gives him a full day of oxygen mm-hmm. in atmosphere. Yeah, so he's just going to fully take off the environmental suit, look like himself, but that's only when he's co- reasonably confident that he's not being observed. Uh, the second he's in the shuttle, he's going to immediately try and fly it again closer to the rest of the crew, but you know, not necessarily in such a way um, that... Uh, uh, they get seen. Could I have during the four days gotten like a marker or like chalk or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the name of the leader of the Southern Continent? The name of the leader of the Southern Continent is Satvari. Okay. Could I have gotten Kit or Whittle? And this is all. This is all you guys here. Could I have gotten you guys to write down on one of my note cards what it would look like as the true glorious leader Sitvari? I'm gonna say, would you have come up with this plan had the person you're stabbed not? No, I wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah, you're using information <laughs> from the future and the past. I don't think. But can I make tracked. the argument though that they are communicating with me? We do have instantaneous communication. Sure. All right. It's a stretch, but I'll allow it for the rule of call. Cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then that's one of the things that I leave there. And I do have an inexpensive alcohol in my inventory. That's not you relevant do. in any way, shape, or form. I leave. <laughs> I get in the boat and I pick everybody up. Okay. <laughs> so what we see, you see the montage of you stripping off your environment suit and uh, you. <laughs> immediately feel the oppressive atmosphere start to burn away your skin. Mm-hmm. And you make it to to the shuttle just before, I think a few patches of your skin are thin enough that, that it started to well up through your skin. You started to get like red marks and lesions and but you managed to make it in just in time before any significant damage. And uh, you're able to kick the shuttle into gear and, and start it going. And um, I think we see a montage of the group um, bursting out of the employee entrance, uh, security in hot pursuit, and you're chased through the streets in in your robes. Uh, I think you managed to to lose them in the in the warren of streets on the way back to the safe house and make it to the shuttle. I think we we reconvene with everyone in the shuttle. We were not seen in the sh- the shuttle was not seen. No, you you managed to lose them before you made it there. Just okay. for. I'm not going to punish you for something that we couldn't roll for. Yeah. At some point um, on the run back, if we could, if there was just like 
a random person in a just like out in the street by themselves could <laughs> have potentially um used um spin identity to pretend that we're part of the crowd chasing like chasing the people who have fled and be like the kakushin they went that way that way for that way and yeah certainly kind of, like, distract yeah everyone's wearing the same light blue robes and there's thousands of people yeah you yeah. managed to you managed to distract the crowd yeah for sure whipple can do that you're very charismatic <laughs> yeah that's how you lose them on the way to the shuttle yeah uh, well, we we did the job. We uh, I I call that an absolute win. Uh, um, we poison the pilot to make sure that sticks. Does it stick? It sticks, right? Oh yeah. Think it, are you fleeing the planet? I I see him pretty immediately. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. What happens on the planet will be our after credit scene. Okay. Yeah. Fly south, then leave the planet. <laughs> no, um, you all, you all, uh, as a collective, receive seven thousand five hundred howl because the sabotage was definitely suspected. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was not a subtle sabotage. The uh, <laughs> mainly from the fuel line exploding. To be fair, I mean, they didn't think gain... it was us. You gained 1,500 each, <laughs> but you did not reveal yourselves to be people from another from other worlds. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with the launch, but you get the 5,000 howl. Um, so you can assume your client is, is pleased on that front. And, uh, yeah, you have... <laughs> <laughs> you have two weeks on the cruise back to the car to uh, debrief and think about what you've done. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what's what's the last shot that we see? We're back in like we we star wipe and we're in the the luxury suites on the ferry ship as it's getting ready to set off for the journey back to the car. What's the scene that we see of the five agents? I like to think that we're all like. <laughs> in some sort of the hot tub type thing and <laughs> Theodric just gets a glass of absinthe and raises it to the rest of the team and goes a job done there are I think there are actually six people in the pool because we're thin fraud someone <laughs> Fair. Just, like, straight up has a bottle of tequila she didn't get anything extra she's a little disappointed in herself do we see like your light blue clothing and robes strewn around the the suite? All the remnants of your time on the planet. You were there for some time. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. we left another shot. Oh, I God. mean, like, I'm keeping the suit. Yeah. Which might actually be fully underwater. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we see we get the end of the heist movie shot. Everyone drinking alcohol or a juice beverage of their choice in a, a luxury tub, uh, with the, the oddity being a quetel underneath the water fully. Uh, the happiest quetel. Yeah, we see we pan around and see the faces of everybody, their reaction to the events that just occurred. And uh, we get the credits sign in for free agents, perfect failure. We get the credits roll. And then after the credits, we see uh, down on the planet, we see the camera's perspective of uh, of a red robed worker who um yeah, who sees loads of shouting, loads of commotion, with shaky cam, it's like found footage. Uh, we see a group of people running off. Uh, which we know to be our agents. And then it swaps back to the launch facility where we see repair crews, um, fire control groups running over, repairing the fuel line, patching things up. Uh, we see like a shot of a boardroom where three green-robed individuals argue and say that we have to go forward with the launch, repair it the best you can. And then uh, we get a shot, you get a big countdown, confetti in the street, we see the realignment capsule taking off into the air, and then 
Everyone's cheering. Countdown. Five, four, three, two. The rocket takes off, streaming through the sky, a brilliant beacon of hope for all of the people of Valkai. And then the top of it explodes. And we end on the explosion. As a, it cuts to black. Yay, we've doomed an entire planet civilization! We don't know, they were, to be fair, we don't know that that they were undoomed before that. That's true. (laughs) Do we see, like, the reflection of it in the visor of the little child who saw saw Cinch? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was awful. What further happens on Valkai will have to be left to another episode of Free Agents. See the repercussions of your actions. Yeah. Yeah, there are no repercussions. Good session, everybody. <laughs> uh, can there be an after after credit scene? What's your after after credit scene? Seymour is looking sadly at an empty pet carrier. <laughs> oh. <No. sighs> it's like comforting. It's like, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I think yeah. I think maybe like there's three whiskey bottles around his chair and he's like sobbing into um, <laughs> Cinch's like torso. He's like, all I wanted was to get fabulously wealthy off of uh, <laughs> illegal ele- uh, animal trafficking. <laughs> Me too. It's okay. Yeah. Me too. Yeah.